TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, if we do happen to go live and you miss it, this is where all the highlights will be over on this channel that's above me and behind me that you see. Uh, don't forget, we do got the Patreon. Oh, my bad. The Patreon. Uh, that's what keeps the bills paid, man. It keeps everything up and running smoothly where I don't have to go get a job and I can just can concentrate on giving y'all the best content that I can possibly give y'all and editing the best that I can. Um, also, don't forget we got the Discord, man. Just drop your suggestions and whatnot in there. Let's get back to this, man. Y'all see the title, man. Part two. Let's get into it, man. We halfway through. It's another Freedom. two hours probably. Vonnet. Purdue University Global, world-class education online. I skipped it. They lying. Crazy story. Von and Dirk slide together. Dang, that's a long story. It's too long. Okay. All right. Now, now, the first one I did yesterday was early in the morning. This one is late at night. I'm on that, you know, I'm doing my thing. So let's see what I talk about now, man. Let me uh, let me see. Oh oh oh! oh. My bad, trap. To the shooting at Duke. The month after the shooting at Dusky's funeral, which critically injured Wooski, King Von seemed to be worried about his reputation, tweeting that the past is always coming back to haunt him, and saying that he's not a murderer, not a rapper, not a scammer just handsome, but also tweeting that if you play with him on the internet, he's going to your house. Perhaps behind the scenes, Von was beginning to struggle to manage his reputation. That's how I be feeling, man. People play with me on this internet. But you know, I'm that far. Patient. Now he was becoming a legitimate rapper in the music it's industry, he might have been worried about his past as a killer getting in the way of his new plans. Von said that he was having nightmares during this time and that he was popping pills to cope. There'd be a few interesting exchanges around this time too, like a Twitter conversation between Von and his baby mama, where Von joked that he would put her on the news and then backtracking, having to deny being a killer. At this point, Von was clearly concerned about his reputation and was on edge to even joke about being a killer. But one person who wasn't worried about Von's reputation was Lil Durk, who was doing everything he could to put King Von on during this time. In mid-November 2018, Lil Durk previews King Von's upcoming song, Crazy Story, on his Instagram. Fans knew that something huge was coming. Lil Durk was taking Von to parties to rub shoulders with other huge rappers in the industry like YNW Melly and Roddy Rich, even taking an enthusiastic King Von to the studio to hang out with Gunna. Hey Durk, yo, Gunna, Salo. Okay, took him, man. Dirk would even bring King Von along to his interviews, with Lil Dirk's November 2018 visit to The Breakfast Club being one of the first times that the mainstream music listening public got a glimpse of King Von. It's crazy, because nowadays, like, Dirk barely do any interviews. Everything, because everybody want to know some, something that's incriminating instead of just asking them about, you know, the music, the future, you know what I'm saying? They want to know... They want to stir up old stuff. And this would end up being a legendary appearance. Clearly doing all he could to put the spotlight on his friend and artist, Dirk had brought Von onto one of the most famous rap interview shows in the world. What's your artist name, bro? King Von. What's up, sir? What's up, John? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Dirk would tell Charlemagne that he wanted to sign Von because of the backstory behind him, with Charlemagne not being quite prepared for the realness. <laughs> Charlemagne is oblivious to streets. <laughs> he was probably thinking like, oh man, it's just another... No, 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 buddy. When Von started talking about beating his murder charge. I mean, you want to sign King Von? Because he got a whole story behind him. Wait, what's the story? What's your story? My story is, yeah, I just got to jail for just beat a body in two attempts. Like, so you was, in, you was in jail for two murders? Yeah, one murder and two attempts. I just beat. How you beat that? What you mean, I, beat. I mean, you didn't do it, clearly. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, like, you know, jury, yeah, look, you know. In the interview, you could visibly see Lil Durk trying to look out for Vaughn and covering his tracks after Charlemagne began asking Von if he actually did the murder. Charlemagne trying to incriminate something. With Dirk butting in, saying that Von beat it because he didn't do it. You gonna yeah, beat it, you gonna, be, you gonna beat it if you didn't do it, that's all. Von would go on to say that he can't get a normal job in Chicago because he's done so much dirt in the streets that if he Hell was seen no. working a normal job, he would probably be killed on sight. It's Maybe like, no I can't work no job in Chicago, you see what nope. I'm saying? Nope. 
Why, why not? Why couldn't you work a job in Chicago? A lot of people in the streets be like that, though. They can't, like, they be in street beef, and then they got normal jobs, and they, they be putting everybody at risk at their jobs. Oh, snap. Hold on. Wait a minute. Just in case, you know what I'm saying? YouTube, I know you're watching, so. A lot of people be like that. I lost, I lost a lot of, like, friends like that. Where they was working normal jobs and steady beefing in the street and people ride past where they work, see them, get them at their job. It really like that. I got a, a face card. Like I can't. Oh, I got you. People like, know you. Say if I'm behind the counter at McDonald's, somebody coming out there, do something crazy. Yeah. Then at the end of the interview, as Von was explaining to Charlemagne that he had no plans after jail because he's got no experience doing anything, suddenly Dirk begins to cough, seemingly giving Von an indication not to say anything incriminating about his former life as a killer. What, what other plans did you have other than rap? I ain't had no plan. That's the thing. Like, you get out, it's, you got a lot of shit on your mouth, so you're getting that. What to do, what to do, what to do is like back to the streets. Mm -hmm. Have you no experience is doing nothing. I ain't, you know. <laughs> Word. This interview <laughs> was also the. Hey, hey, what's understood don't gotta be explained. He said. <clears throat> Perfect opportunity for Von to promote no his upcoming hit song, Crazy Story. Crazy Story dropped like sometime this week coming up. Oh, sometime like any day. Von would go on to tease the music video for Crazy Story, telling fans that he has a movie coming. And he would even surprise himself with the amount of comments that he got on the post about the song. Von would go on to release the audio for Crazy Story on December the 6th, 2018, just one day before the one year anniversary of him beating his murder case. Von would claim- Dude, Chicago knew his story, so he had the city behind him already. The city, the Chicago line area, they, everybody wanted to know what the music was like after that, after, you know, because everybody knew. <laughs> Around this time, to be making chess moves in the hopes that he would win at life. And his next move would indeed be a big one. With the full-blown music video for Crazy Story dropping on Worldstar on the 11th of December, Von himself would be amazed at racking up a whopping 110,000 views in his first day. But the appeal of Crazy Story was undeniable. It was a storytelling type song where Von would use his lyrics to tell an entire narrative. Tell to me, storytelling is the best type of rap. And then when you put it behind like a... Like a drill artist start doing it with still like that drill like format, but like it's a story. Drill is already IRL, right? It's like, let me break it down to you as, as gruesome as we as I possibly can, but it's real. And then you put it like a story, like people was like really like glued to their seats of that type of music. Was Telling the story of himself plotting an armed robbery on a rich drug dealer and using a woman to set them up. But the robbery would go wrong when Von's ops caught him lacking, with the track ending in a shootout, and the entire story playing out in the cinematic music video for the song, with Von playing the main character and narrator. Von would end the song dropping his iconic final line where he introduced the world to his regular catchphrase, rapping from 64th and from 65th, we not from 63rd. Shouting out O-Block on 64 Say it one more time, and, child. and from 69, where he introduced the world to his regular catchphrase, rapping from 64th and from 65th, we not from 63rd. Shouting out O-Block on 64th and 65th King Drive and dissing his ops from 63rd and St. Lawrence and Eberhard Avenues, AKA Tukerville. Dissing 63rd would become a massive part of Von's brand. And he would even later be seen selling merch showing the street sign for 63rd with a big cross over it. And the popularity of the song Crazy Story had Von's fans all over the world dissing 63rd without really even knowing what it means. Crazy Story was distributed by Lil Durk's OTF label and racked up a whopping 3 million views in a week. This is a huge hit and today it sits over 69 million views on YouTube. Von was on a high after dropping Crazy Story. The week after the release, he would tweet a picture with the caption saying that people see you shining and forget that you're dangerous. And from here, he would make numerous tweets suggesting that the money was finally rolling in. At the end of December 2018, Dirk would hop on an Instagram live with Von with a big stack of money celebrating the success of their release. Oh, what's that? Dude, I got a drop on a flex. He from Tennessee. What that is, confetti in your hand? Plan, boy. Never don't throw that. Hey, don't th you gonna break something that happened. Don't throw that. Bro. Then in the new year, King Von would begin performing his hit song at live shows, even reacting on Twitter to his new song playing on the radio, suggesting that some people might have been shocked when they heard him coming out of their car stereo. Von felt like he had truly made it at this point, tweeting that.
even him, and saying that he felt truly blessed for the position that he had reached in life. But some people in Chicago were surprised. Now King Von was being played on the radio, doing interviews with The Breakfast Club, and becoming a household name, some people who knew him in Anybody Chicago being a ruthless shooter that. were giving the side eye. There was actually a really interesting Reddit thread, asking people who knew of Von before 2017 to share what they thought when they saw him getting success in the music industry. Some said that they thought when he first started rapping he wouldn't get anywhere, but then when he kept progressing, it seemed like his life was a real movie. Whilst another person would say, 100% I could not believe it. When Dirk took him on Breakfast Club, it was so surreal, and he almost admitted to murder on there too. But still, I never thought he would blow up. Then Crazy Story came out and started picking up steam, and it was like, dear God, this literal gang assassin is being played at NFL stadiums. Oh. Recordings just got better. Hey, it's Dana from Stream. <laughs> he said, dear God, there's literal gang assassin is being played at NFL stadiums. That's the thing, though, man. People can hide behind music. You don't even think of it when you when they rapping. There's so many fool rappers out here lying and, and faking. Like you don't know who what's real. Off the back of the success of Crazy Story, King Von would begin going even harder in his music, with his next track getting even more disrespectful to the Ops. On January the 9th, 2019, Mimo 600 and King Von would drop their new track, Exposing Me. And in the song, Von mentions Wooski getting shot in the head. He says that he's put in so much work in the street that Get Back Gang will now look out for him. He says outright that he was a killer before the rap, and saying, I swear I killed her, broke her back, a possible reference to K.I.'s murder, he would say that he's smoking Tuca and Lil Mark, and Von even shouts out an old friend from O'Block, DQ, as his shooter, suggesting that he will call a hit and have DQ shoot someone for him. It seemed like the more violent and real Von's music Just got, wrong call a hit. I'm thinking about creating a new pack. Hey, DQ, who's the have DQ shoot someone for him. It seemed like the more violent Legendary. and real Von's music got, the more fans flocked to him. But since the success of his crazy story, and being brought under the wing of successful Chicago drill rap legend Lil Durk, Von was spending a lot of time away from the mean streets of Chicago that he had rapped about, instead beginning to get used to living the high life of a successful rapper like Durk. Rather than jumping in stolen cars and doing drills, Von was seen with Dirk jumping off of luxury yachts, seemingly surrounded by people who knew his reputation well. Okay, okay, Dirk, yo, it's on you now. This Dirk scared. This scared. Okay, okay. He got the right to be scared. We don't know how to swim from Chicago. <laughs> we do not know how to swim. I, I'm a, I'm a merch that we do not. Mm -mm. Half of us ain't even been out of Chicago. How we know how to swim? Okay, Vaughn. This yeah. scared. Yeah, I'm a bitch. Look at Vaughn. Look at Vaughn. Be too scared. Get wild, be what? They talking about Vaughn. He scared to jump. They out here talking about you. All that savages. You scared to jump in the water. Are you gonna jump in with one sock on? Oh, my bad. But all of the success Vaughn was seeing didn't seem to change who he really was underneath. It seemed like Dirk was doing his best to take a killer out of a dangerous environment and turn him into a good person and rapper. But perhaps Lil Durk didn't realize that he was also inviting that killer energy into his legitimate rap career. Because on February the 5th, 2019, around 5.49 a.m., Lil Durk and King Von were allegedly outside Atlanta restaurant, The Varsity. Here, an altercation would take place in the parking lot where allegedly Lil Durk and King Von along with fellow OTF affiliate THF Bezu and another Chicago native named Hella Bands, would allegedly shoot and rob a man by the name of Alexander Witherspoon, allegedly targeting him for $30,000 cash that he had on him at the time. Detectives would later claim that a video showed Lil Durk shooting out of his own personal car, a custom Jeep Trackhawk with a camouflage wrap and a large 300 on the sign that he was known to own. Durk had even posted clips of this car to Twitter with the caption, Spin Spin, clips which even Von himself had reposted. Cops would be seen analyzing the scene after the shooting, and the local news would report on the shooting before even becoming aware of these famous rappers' involvement. Police found several shell casings in this parking lot. The varsity was closed at the time this happened, around 5.45 this morning, but this club across Spring Street was open, and one patron who was parked in the varsity lot to go to that club told me what he went through. The man from Chicago, who goes by Gutta, returned to the varsity parking lot this afternoon to change the tire and assess the damage on his cousin's car after it was hit by bullets. Tired, exhausted, wild night. I'm just happy I'm alive, basically. So 
that's really what my main focus is. He had just paid the cover to get into one cigar lounge across Spring Street when he heard. Gunner wasn't trying to say no much. He knew. Heard the shots outside around 5:45 a.m. I'm gonna get my little 15 seconds, but I ain't gonna say nothing. M. He says people hit the floor and he hid in a bathroom. Police say a 23-year-old man was in serious condition when he was rushed to the hospital after the shooting. They are now looking for a dark-colored SUV. They are doing anything they can to help Atlanta police. The afternoon after the shooting, Von would post up on Twitter with a handful of cash and a gun on the couch next to him. Later on, posting a tweet saying you never know who's going to snitch when the cops come. Then, the day after the shooting, Von would tweet asking if you can be a killer and a good person too. A few days later, on February the Von would tweet asking if you can be a killer and a good person too. A few days later, on February the 9th, 2019, Von would be seen in the background on an Instagram Like Twitter was his full-blown diary. Instagram Live with Asian Doll, with Von talking to his friend on the phone, possibly about this very shooting. He would seemingly be telling his friend that he thinks he made all of the wrong moves and saying that the cops are now watching him. Now you know I ain't trying to do none of this. Oh dude, that's so fluky. We just did the wrong the wrong side took me like a together. It was a fool. He just feel like you made all the wrong moves to, you know, on mistake. We just was tweaking on for that shit, y'all. We just gotta be tighter last time for no. <laughs> now you understand, see that look. See that's the part I was saying, like everybody be tweaking with me on oh, you know Jason, them all of my head tweaking me talking about this, that and that. But I ain't letting you know that I'm just letting them tickle me and trying to make sure everything decent. By the time you don't be seeing man, all that part, man, man, I'm all with the man about putting on, I'm all with the man the show, I'm all with the man on the stage, I'm all with the man air work, man. And you think I'm just enough paper. You're talking about where the fuck he gets that accent. Yeah, they be tickling me, boy, I'm putting on that shit on me. I don't understand him sometimes, y'all. He do. Man, you worry about the run that little shit again. That's what nothing you need to think about or talk about. Just if you have a fruity today, they go, oh, it's fruity. I'm going to run one shit. Yeah, I know that I'm, oh, I look up, oh, I'm swinging you in the truck with us. I'm falling over when I get out like that. But you know, I'm high and thinking about it. But clearly, Von wasn't too worried about the cops watching because he would tweet on February the 21st that he was ready to catch another body. And the day after, Von jumps on a reckless IG live with fans, showing off all the money he had apparently Half made. the shit they be tweeting about, he don't even be talking about nobody out there. He really be talking about Chicago beef. He don't even be just like, nothing that he be talking about was. From features dissing Tuka and saying that he's not a rapper, just a gangster who raps for the money. Hey, this beef, you know, I just picked this up though, folks. About to drink some, smoke some. I often smoke Tuka. You know who Tuka is? No, what is that? That's him. Ooh. He's been dead for a long time. I don't you don't know Tuka. They're rappers. Nah, I'm not a rapper. See, they be on the road. Nah, I'm a gangster. I just rap because they be giving me money for it. While cops were slowly piecing together the facts about the shooting, Von was continuing with his rap career without sparing a thought to how much self-incrimination he was doing to himself at the time. On February the 28th, Von drops a feature on Dari's song, Gang Only, where he raps he has a lot of bodies, even saying that on his first murder, the victim thought it was a robbery. Around a week later, on March the 5th, 2019, King Von's song, Wait, unofficially leaks. That track has some brazen lyrics, where he says that he has more bodies than the killer from Scream, as well as admitting that he shot up Dunbar School with L.A. Capone, something he had tweeted about prior. He would also say that he remembers his first murder and saying that he missed a bunch of shots, but now his aim is better. And while these demonic tracks are circulating online, King Von and Lil Durk are having a great time flexing on Instagram Live and fighting over who has the most money and designer clothing. Yeah. Hey, you saw me flexing early? No, man, I was, I was too big. Nickname Pop Pop. Pop Pop, no spinach. Yeah. Come on. Hold on. All the flung and flashing cash, that's that's typical of a Chicago. You know what I'm saying? We're so used to nothing. It's like when we finally get something, everything's a trophy, everything's a celebration, man. Yeah. God damn it. I, I, I just what? know. What? This never I, I'm gonna play. I just married myself to death. Flash. That's no matter though. You over there with Tony on. Huh? 
You over there with 20 bucks. Don't try to count my money. Don't count my pockets. Don't throw no bread. Hey. But you all know. Damn. <laughs> you do it too much. Them GBS is in them things. That's a couple belts. Hey, I'm saying. Fat, fat, fifty a piece. You still flexing? Hey, n got these Chanel's right here. Later on in this live, Von would joke to Lil Durk, saying that he was smoking on Lil Mark and Tuka. I'm right here kicking with Lil Mark. Dirty ass. Damn. Marky. That shit be so much yesterday, son. I, Marky. I never felt like we'd creep in the studio. Lil Mark. Tuka, nigga, y'all the f going on. I don't know f about this. But at this point, King Von was playing huge concerts to massive crowds and selling verses to other rappers all over the country and making headlines in major rap publications. King Von would tweet around this time that he was scared to go back to jail and hoping that he wasn't making the wrong decisions and suggesting that he was worried that if he did go back to jail, all his new friends would leave him behind. But no matter how far Von got into the rap industry, he just couldn't stop toting guns and thugging. At the end of March, Von was seen riding around with- Stop, hey, trap, stop. That's not how you pronounce that. Lil Durk, toting a big strap for any ops that might pull up, even joking about having more bodies than anyone in the car and saying that he's about to get indicted and go to jail for a long time. If you ain't know, man, this is how Chicago people talk to each other. We always call each other B words, call each other. We always do that, but like, you got to be cool. Like we got to be cool with each other. It can't just be like a random person doing it. But like this is how she, this is how we communicate. Up and down we go. Got this load back up, man. After this, Dirk had whoever was behind the wheel driving incredibly fast in that Jeep Trackhawk, with Von seemingly in fear of his life and joking that his gun is about to go off.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you, bro. I'm going to read it, motherfucker. Both of you out there. Yeah, I love you. Dirk and Von were clearly living the fast life at this point, and seemingly having faced no consequences so far for the shooting at the Varsity nearly two months before. However, rumors would continue to swirl about their involvement in serious crimes. On the 31st of March 2019, King Von is seen hanging out with Savannah rapper Quando Rondo, who is signed to Baton Rouge rapper NBA Youngboy with Quando appearing in a clip on King Von's Instagram where he would diss Von's ops on 63rd. I'm saying though, they got 63rd. Dirty ass, <laughs> man. <laughs> See, that's the thing, and that's why Quando went up to it. But they knew what was going on, man. Everybody knew what happened. What are you talking about, man? They thought they was excluded from that? No, well, Von is one of them. <laughs> He one of them. If we beefing, we all into it. Hey, Mr. Yo, man, it seems that back then, Von and Quando Rondo's camps were pretty cool with each other. That very same night that he was with Quando, Von is seen hanging out and hitting the stage with Lil Durk. Von would tweet a picture with Dirk, along with a caption saying they've got to stay focused because their enemies envy them. The same day these pictures were taken, an altercation would take place at the Hidden Village Apartments complex in Atlanta. A man named Tyrick Livat was shot dead, with the news reporting a total of five people shot, the result of a huge shootout. Apparently, a large fight had broken out between two large groups, and an hour after the fight, one group who had left and returned got into it again and begun shooting, with five people being hit in the altercation and Tyreek unfortunately losing his life, being found dead by police in the parking lot around 10.30 p.m. The police would say that the shooter goes by a nickname, but refused to disclose it to the press, with reports on this incident making it to the TV news the following day. Now to a developing story, a shooting leaves one person dead, four others injured. This happened at an apartment complex in southwest Atlanta. Yeah, see, man. That's why going to Atlanta is like, you might as well just go to Chicago. Atlanta right now is like little Chicago. You might as well just... And Atlanta was already like the but like downtown, like it ain't safe nowhere no more. Natasha Givens is live outside of Grady Memorial Hospital. And their gun laws is different in Atlanta. That's why a lot of rappers move there, because they can move different in Atlanta with the pipe. Natasha, what are we learning about their conditions this morning? Well, Christy, police tell us this all started at a house party last night on Lantern Drive. They tell us a fight broke out between two large groups, and at some point, a man opened fire, hitting five people. Let's take a look at some of that video from last night. Police tell us one man was found dead at the party, while four others were rushed here to Grady. We're told the victims' ages range from 17 to 20, and the victims are all male. Investigators are trying to determine a motive and what happened leading up to that shooting. Oh. Probably got into about a female. That's normally what it'd be about. That's what that whole beef in Chicago is about. The 20, 60, 30, 60, 4, 6 over a female. That's where it stems from. Of course, more stuff is in, it's in, it's more intricate now, but. Oh, my God. Oh, whoa, whoa. My bad. Suggesting that King Von and THF Bezu had something to do with the shooting. However, Lil Dirk would tweet, never, just a couple of hours after the body was discovered, followed by tweeting, protect the money at all costs the morning after. Von would tweet the following morning that you can do everything right and they're still going to find a way to bring you down, dissing somebody that he doesn't name. Meanwhile, another member of their entourage, Mimo 600, would tweet the day after, saying that people will end up on the news. For the record, there's never been any concrete evidence to indicate that Von, Dirk, Bezu, or any of their entourage had anything to do with this killing. And Tyreek Livert's cousin would actually do a YouTube interview saying that he also doesn't believe that Von had anything to do with the killing either. <laughs> yeah. They said King Von killed your cousin. That's what they saying, I don't believe it, but honestly, I think they be just attaching King Von name it. I don't see it. I don't see it, you know. You could be with Dirk with all these fancy and, you know what I'm saying, then you owe it up. Like, you know what I'm saying, then it don't add up. It's highly likely that this... You sure about that? You sure about that? <laughs> Y'all seen that TikTok where he'd be like, you sure about that? That's the incident had nothing to do with Von and Dirk, but that didn't stop people all over the internet making King Von body count articles and videos speculating as to whether King Von was responsible for this murder too. None of this proves Von was involved, but what it does prove is that even if he wasn't involved, his reputation as a shooter would have the fans and public pointing the finger at him Every regularly. Time. But as the weeks went by, Von would continue to go about his life 
whilst the cops would continue building the case related to the original shooting at the Varsity. On April the 1st, the victim in the Varsity shooting, Alexander Weatherspoon, would end up being booked into a Chicago jail on unrelated charges of possession of a stolen vehicle. It seemed like the police were slowly getting closer to having something concrete, but King Von just didn't seem worried about attracting the attention of the authorities. In a social media clip uploaded on April the 2nd, 2019, King Von recorded himself singing in the back of a car with Lil Durk, dissing dead people like Dooski and saying that they all Almost killed Wooski. Here we go again, here we go again, back on the road again, back on the road again, right down the avenue, right down the avenue, we catch you. What song is that? What 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 um what melody melody is he going to it? You through, we get you. You do. No I don't you wanna no talk to you. I don't truck, wanna yeah, talk to you. I don't really f you. I don't really f with mm -hmm. you. Is I'm shooting right? Ain't wrong. Is I'm paper, shooting light? Man, I'm shooting strong. Die, why? Yeah, the little two Z go. T three. Do ski. Uh, uh, wool ski almost. <laughs> Also in April, he would tweet saying he's so real he might kill, and posting throwback pictures of him and T-Roy back when they were hitters in Chicago. He would even post a picture of himself with a gun in his waistband and a caption saying his enemies envy him, as well as tweeting about can't get right being killed in the parking lot. Von would tweet saying that he's never the victim, always the suspect. And this is all while police are still looking for a suspect in the Varsity shooting. On the 10th of April, a day before the anniversary of KI's murder, King Von would tweet a cryptic message asking if the streets could be his valentine, saying that they're tired of dying. Then one day after the anniversary of KI's death, King Von would make a biblical tweet, saying, God said to me out of his own mouth to cut her off, grandson. And grandson said, in Jesus' name, amen. Von would even tweet, Hey, don't bring Jesus into this, Von. Huh? Tweet reminding people that even though they see him having fun on Twitter, be careful, because he's still dangerous in real life. He would say that he'll do something to somebody if they go against him, and Von would also release a clip apparently promoting Lil Durk's new cereal, Durky Oats, telling people to go and buy the cereal whilst waving the clip of a gun. Von would also later tell a woman that he comes with the cereal. If you ain't order no Durky Oats, that you a b I stop playing my mother twin. Order that A day later, on April the 16th, 2019, Von is on Instagram Live mocking Wooski for changing after being shot in the head, saying that Wooski doesn't diss them anymore. He ain't been the same. He don't talk sh no more, nothing, I don't know, what the f This man talk to me, yeah, that man man, DM me no more, nothing, I don't know. His ass a <laughs> <laughs> Don't bullet be changing them, man. I hope you watching, I hope you hear this, your ass up, dude. That same day, he would tweet that he doesn't shake. He, he was just a troll. That's what make it so crazy. Like, he was just a killing ass troll. That's tough. His clout, he actually chases people with guns and tweeting that Tuka died for your enjoyment. He would even tweet about the crimes that he was committing in Atlanta, saying that he's been doing damage on. That's typical though of Chicago. Like, if you beat up somebody, you're gonna Chicago. talk about it all day and every day. You're gonna make them mad. Both streets since he was young, and now he's ready to cause problems <sighs> elsewhere. Hashtag steppers, a sentiment that apparently Lil Durk was in full support of. Durk was giving Von nothing but support during this period. He would make a cameo in the video for Von's track Cousins with Just Blow 600, another outrageously gangster anthem where King Von raps that if his ops aren't outside, then he will find and kill their cousins instead. This is an unbelievable thing to rap considering King Von's history of killing people and their cousins. But the track would have some more seemingly incriminating lyrics, like Just Blow 600 rapping that him and Von are popping pills, riding in the Jeep Trackhawk looking for ops, and killing people after fights. What if I told you for just a dollar day? I got a haircut with the count is 24, and killing people after fights. Von would rap that his gang's body count is 24, and he'd rap that he kills women and men and can't tell the difference. And Von would even promote the video for Cousins with a hilarious tweet, telling fans that if their cousin is cool with their ops, to go to their auntie's house right now and kill them. King Von's first tweet after posting that song was warning his ops what he would do to them 
if he catches them without the police around. A day after that, Von posts a picture of himself eating cereal, and tweeting about having killers that want him dead, and killers that look up to him. Von was also feeling- See what I'm saying though? Remember in the first, in the part one of this, I said, Chicago just love cereal. We eat cereal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, a snack. Example A. Serial, and tweeting about having killers that want him dead and killers that look up to him. Von was also feeling generous around this time, tweeting that he had given his mother a Gucci purse and $10,000 cash, as well as openly tweeting that he still robs people. Von would even reply to a troll who asked why he's robbing people when he's a rich, successful rapper. And Von actually replied to this, Before. saying he robs people because he doesn't want to spend his own money, he wants to spend somebody else's. But even if he was robbing, Von would soon have the music money rolling in even more. Von would begin teasing his collaboration with Lil Durk, Crazy Story 2.0, on April 29th. Then the day after this, on April the 30th, Von ends up having a funny interaction with a fan who replied to Lil Durk's teaser of Crazy Story 2.0, saying that she preferred it when King Von raps on his own. Von would reply to this saying, the song isn't part two, it's a version two, and that part two of Crazy Story is coming eventually, with the girl then trolling Von by pleading for him not to kill her, with Von face palming and promising not to kill the woman. I mean, to me, this interaction really drives home just how absurd it is that you've got this celebrity rapper just trying to go about his career and release music whilst it's widely known that he is a hardened killer and people are tweeting at him, begging him to not kill them too. But regardless, things were going well for King Von and Crazy Story 2.0 with Lil Durk was due to be a hit. Man, people just, people love that. People love that. That's why Von was a multi-platinum selling artist. They love that fact about him. You know, people, especially females, they're gonna play like that to see if they can get at you. She shot her shot. And it seemed like King Von could do with another hit, because he had apparently blown through $150,000 by this point, encouraging fans that they can do it too if they just work hard. Von would also tweet that people talk slick until bullets rip through them. Sadly for Von, the good times would soon come to an end. King Von would return to Chicago for a hometown concert, but this would end up being cancelled on the day, with Von suggesting that somebody was out to get him. And then, on May the 4th, 2019, footage would emerge showing a huge force of over 30 Chicago police officers raiding O-Block to arrest King Von, with Von himself being arrested in dramatic footage where he was tackled to the ground with an enraged mob of his friends accusing the cops of stealing his chain at the scene. And the cops even had to draw assault rifles on the crowd to keep them at bay whilst they arrested Von. In addition to those clips, the full body cam footage of King Von's arrest would later be released. So if he ain't never get it back, they definitely stole it. Let's go, let's go. Following the arrest, Von would be taken to the station where he would continue to argue. They definitely took his chain, man. <laughs> Some of them police is gangsters out there. They definitely took it. ...with the cops. I remember one time I got arrested and, um, and I forgot where I was. I got arrested and uh, I, I, was, I was handcuffed to a bench like this. And I was arguing with the police, just like he was arguing. I, but I was handcuffed, my arms behind my back, handcuffed to the bench. And they tased me, because I wouldn't be quiet. They tased me while I'm handcuffed, arms behind my back to the bench. I was in Rosemont. 
They tase me, bro. It's my police bogus. <laughs> We're talking about stop it. Vine 140. <laughs> Wet 145. If y'all slam him, yeah, you hurt his back. It's 19 of y'all. It was 97,000 of y'all. 19 of y'all probably roughed him up. They fanned out. Look at they. They fan. They fans. They fans. They really. They really admire him. <laughs> they they having good convos with him. But you gotta like if you if you meet a Chicago dude like most of us is like quiet to ourselves. But most of us is like approachable people, funny people, down to earth, <laughs> likable. Hence, you see, they didn't tackle the man. Now they having a good convo. Ha <laughs> You feel me? What is the name of the Yeah. All right? Now, what's this all they doing? All right. Y'all wrong. What a podcast. Right. At the same time, though, when you go, when you get into custody, people that be your mans want to, especially if you drop some on the ground, you might never see it again. They're your boys. Police speaking facts. That's a fact. After Vaughn's arrest, his furious mugshot would later be made public, and he would remain in jail for a significant stretch of time. Lil Durk would react to the news, tweeting free Vaughn with a sad face. But only the week after Vaughn is arrested, something unexpected happened. On May the 11th, 2019, the fourth person who was in the track hawk on the night of the shooting, Hella Bands, would be suddenly shot and killed outside of a Miami nightclub before facing any charges. With a Miami... Uh, suddenly. Miami Beach spokesperson revealing that Hella Bands was also wanted in Atlanta for attempted murder and armed robbery. After Vaughn was picked up in Chicago and waiting to be sent back to Atlanta to face charges, two days later, on May the 13th, 2019, THF Bezu would also be arrested in Chicago, charged with being a fugitive from justice. What precinct was this uh, arrest location? Flunk, flunk. I don't even say. Out of state, once again, in connection with the Atlanta shooting. For the meantime, it would only be Vaughn and Bezu in jail, with Dirk remaining free and tweeting free Vaughn, as well as an RIP to Hella Bands. Vaughn would be transferred to Atlanta to face charges in connection with the shooting on May the 17th. And as usual, his sister ran his social media accounts, keeping fans updated with pictures of Vaughn in jail. It ain't safe. Miami not safe either, man. Miami got them. Man, you can't even skip this ad with that dog. Blind? Can't even see. Everybody, every dog want to be lassie all of a sudden. Like, just be yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you a husky, be a husky. If you a German Shepherd, be a hus German Shepherd. You not lassie, chill out. Lassie was a, what was he, a shepherd dog? What was he? Chill with his accounts, keeping fans updated with pictures of Vaughn in jail. But while Vaughn was behind bars, with his mentor Dirk free, his career would keep rising in his absence. Only a couple of days later, on May the 20th, 2019, Crazy Story 2.0 drops with that Lil Dirk verse. This remix of Crazy Story had King Von and Lil Dirk going back to back over the original, booming Crazy Story instrumental. Crazy Story 2.0 was a huge street hit, and today sits close to 100 million views on YouTube, and even landed Von his first entry on the Billboard Global 200 chart. 
Unfortunately, the Atlanta shooting case would also catch up to Lil Durk soon too, with Durk tweeting at the end of May that he was turning himself in and sitting down for a TV news interview where he revealed that he was turning himself in to face these charges, and that he was also releasing a song called that's WPR, Turn man. That's W, that's w footwork that he laid down. Myself in. You're about to surrender as we speak. Yeah. How come? Because I have nothing to add. Like, I have nothing to run from. Good, good, good terms. A rapper's ride. Soon after we spoke, Dirk Banks, aka the performer Lil Dirk, emerged from his lawyer's space and headed toward an SUV. Soon after that, he stepped out in front of the Fulton County Jail. One of his lawyers says, Fulton County, that's what they rough out there, too. He was swiftly taken into custody there, having swiftly flown back to Atlanta after he found out he was wanted. We found out we had a warrant. We were actually on tour. Once I heard, I immediately came back. He's willing to turn himself in and take care of what he needs to take care of. We immediately um, canceled the tour. He's got a multi-million dollar salary music career going. Did you do it? Did you shoot this man? Did you commit the other crimes of which you're accused? Um, no. Warrants involving an incident in February on North Avenue involved charges including criminal attempt to commit murder and aggravated assault. One document indicates an Atlanta police investigator said to the best of his knowledge, Banks was employed or associated with a criminal street gang to conduct or participate in gang activity, shooting at the victim while co-defendants shot and robbed him. I had a bad background just growing up as a child, um, about father being uh, incarcerated for 25 years, 26 years. So I had a rough past, but like me moving to Atlanta, I just thought that it just changed my whole identity of, of thinking. After Dirk and Von were in custody. <laughs> I didn't even see that interview. Bro was in there really trying to plead with the general public, trying to see him in a good light. Hmm? An Atlanta judge revealed that they believed that there was enough evidence to charge both Dirk and Von in the attempted murder. And Dirk and Von would be seen in an iconic televised court appearance. Today, little Dirk appeared in court where a judge ruled there was enough evidence for him to go to trial. The rapper and Bennett listened to the evidence against them in court. The APD says they used at least five cameras from local businesses, including this BP, as well as from the varsity across the street in order to build their case against Lil Dirk and his co-defendant. On Friday, detectives from Atlanta and Chicago testified in the criminal case against rapper Lil Dirk in Fulton County Court. They say around five in the morning on February 5th, Lil Dirk, whose real name is Dirk Derek Banks, and his co-defendant, Devon Bennett were seen on camera involved in shooting Alexander Witherspoon. He said his chain was snatched off his neck and he had $30,000 stolen from him and they stole the vehicle he was driving. Police say Banks was seen on tape shooting a gun. Apparently, their defense team were looking to put forward a self-defense plea with the suggestion that it was the man who was shot who actually initiated the altercation. Then, after some legal back and forths, Lil Dirk would be granted the opportunity to get out of jail on a $250,000 bond. Following this announcement, Dirk was seen running out of the jail and telling fans that Vaughn is getting out tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Back. Hey, thank you everybody for the love and support. Yeah, definitely appreciate everybody for rocking out with us, supporting us, believing us, you know? Everybody just screams for you. I've been here so long, this Instagram feel fake. <laughs> that was a lot of Instagram and IG in this one. Vaughn to be on tomorrow. Dirk was back, and he would eventually open up about his time in jail after his release, with his lawyer saying definitively, he is not in a gang. Then when you get in type of that, uh, in, in a predicament like this, you would sit back and be like, damn, like, why I ain't never do this more? Why I ain't never do this with my kids more? Why I ain't do this with my pops more, my mama? You know what I'm saying? So it just sent me down so I just understand life more. A member of his legal team says slightly more than two months after he surrendered to be booked into the Fulton County Jail. His lawyer thick, ain't she? This the same lawyer he got now? She look a little different. She look like she she look like Vaughn. She look like Dirk been paying a lot of money. Lil Dirk, aka Dirk Banks, did a book bag giveaway Sunday in conjunction with the Atlanta Entertainment Basketball League, where kids can watch NBA players and others for free. 
because it was the right thing to do, though she knows there will be critics. It ain't nothing new pop up because the case, we've been doing it. That he did not do it because of the serious charges he faces after a February incident on North Avenue in which a man was wounded by gunfire, including criminal attempt to commit murder. We'll fight our case in court. And a gang it's charge. The same Little Dirk validated himself as having a gang affiliation, right? Allegedly, right. Among others. Being from South Southern Chicago, essentially you have to choose a gang for your safety. You don't choose a gang, um, you can be killed just for not being in a gang. Is he currently in a gang? Absolutely not. He moved to Atlanta to get away from the gang life, to get away from the streets. Von would also be granted a $300,000 bond, being released on June the 22nd, confirmed by a tweet, of course. With Von jumping on Instagram Live fresh home from jail and dissing his baby mama, but not thinking that he would ever be getting out. I want to shout out everybody that was on my dick and thought I want to coming out on uh, suck my dick. Uh, I want to shout out everybody that's talking crazy like my baby mama now. I've been through some <laughs> Hey, hey, let's call me a hoe. I smacked the shit out of her. Von would go from jail straight onto house arrest, opening up about his situation on Instagram Live. I ain't got no good shout out. I can't hear. Damn. Part of the bail conditions were that Dirk and Von could not be around each other, as King Von would later reveal in a No Jumper interview. Yeah, so yeah, we, me and Dirk, we, ain't, we only see each other like at court, if we got court or something. But Von and Dirk would still be releasing music together. On July the 9th, 2019, Von and Dirk released their latest collab track, Like That. And despite their legal troubles, Von was still dropping lyrics hinting towards having killed K.I. and dissing Tuka. It's actually crazy to me that even whilst facing serious charges of attempted murder, both King Von and Lil Dirk would continue to rap about such true criminality. Lil Dirk- You gotta remember Trap, like, like, some of this music be old. It ain't like they get out and write a bar right there. They got old music. They got, they got stuff in the vault. You know, stuff that had been planned. Okay, we recorded this this day, but we gonna hold it for two, six months, eight months. We gonna drop it then when it matter. Like, we just, like, it matter right now. We just both got out. We buzzing hard right now. Let me drop a song. Let's drop a song together. That old shit that we had. Let's do it. It makes That's sense. This experiment in taking the realist gangbanger from his block and turning him into a drill rapper was going too far and jeopardizing his own career. It was only years later, after Von's death, that those charges against Lil Durk for the varsity shooting were eventually dropped, with the district attorney saying that if King Von was still alive, he likely would have still been charged and facing trial for attempted murder. But in the end, whilst he was alive, King Von would face no real consequences for his involvement in this supposed shooting. In fact, Von would bail out from these charges and continue his career, not even choosing to keep a low profile either. In fact, even with the scrutiny of the police in two states, Von would go on to have one of the most successful runs in the rap game, dropping song after song of violent drill anthems, with the entire world following along and wondering how this multiple murderer just kept getting away with it. Oh. Oh. Man, they get good ads. Huh? Some of these ads on this on this one, I ain't never ever seen. This like the Super Bowl of, 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 of drill. This is the Super Bowl of drill documentaries and things of that nature. Man, you know, I'm going to be sitting here for two hours. I got to hydrate. Got me a little Gatorade or whatever. The king Once the hip-hop world saw King Von next to Lil Durk in the courtroom in shackles, he quickly gained a reputation as one of the realest street rappers in the rap game. For some people, seeing Von in court with Dirk, one of the most famous rappers in Chicago history, was their first introduction to him. However, for anybody that looked closer into his history, discovering the murder case that he beat, or as many as seven people he was rumored to have killed, they would be easily convinced that King Von might just be one of the most deadly and dangerous people to ever pick it's up a microphone. Crazy. And King Von wasn't just a killer who had gotten oh. away with his terrible crimes, but he was seemingly willing to rap about about them for the whole world to hear. Von's next release after getting arrested with Dirk would be his May 30th, 2019 feature on Izzy Blatt's song, Straight Facts, with this track being yet another self-incrimination fest. Von raps on the song that he used to do murder for hire, and he says that he shoots people in the face and is seven to one on beating murder cases. Von even ended the song saying that the last person that came to his street got killed. With lyrical content this dark, the song saying in the face,
and is 7 to 1 on beating murder cases. Von even ended the song his translation of lyrics be off a little. Saying that the last person that came to his street got killed. With lyrical content this dark, violent, and frankly self-incriminating, it's hard to believe that King Von would go on to achieve mainstream success in the rap game. But his that music was, was undeniably good, despite the murderous messages behind it. He genuinely had a talent for taking these dark experiences he'd had in the streets and making them into songs that painted a vivid- It's not a surprise though, it's like all about timing in the music industry and this was what was it at the time. Vivid picture. And it celebrities is. would soon begin discovering his music and promoting it without a full appreciation of the stories behind the songs. Von would end up getting a huge career boost when basketball star LeBron James's son, Bronny, would jam out to Von's original anthem, Crazy Story, with Bronny even passing Von's music to his father, who reportedly would end up becoming a fan of playing Von's music during his workouts. While Von spent close to two months in jail in connection for the attempted murder in Atlanta, he would spend some of that time behind bars writing some of the biggest songs of his career. And when he King, got out, King James, King Dan that's what he's, you know. He would go on the run of a lifetime, taking over the rap game with his new songs and buzzing reputation as a real shooter. Priming fans for the upcoming release of his debut mixtape, Grandson Volume 1, Von promoted it with an Instagram post pondering if the people he killed spirits follow him around until he dies. And also... What a... Man, see? To be putting... Pondering if the people he killed... Okay, I get that. Why I get why he drew that conclusion, but that is not what they say. What if everybody you ever smoked spirits got? He alluded to it, yes. But it ain't, you know. Vaughn had a real knack at saying stuff, but not really saying it. Like, not really for it being about him. You know what I'm saying? Like, it can be two ways that these, these, these Instagram posts are interpreted and in court, like, you gotta be certainty. You gotta be certain. There can't be no doubt. And you know, a lawyer's gonna bring up the doubt. This is circumstantial. This is this means this. He wasn't talking. He was this is a general statement. That's what they're gonna do. He was kind of making general killing statements. <laughs> Pondering if the people he killed spirits follow him around until he dies. And also tweeting that by the time people work out what he's done, it will be too late and his mixtape will be out. The tape's lead single, What It's Like, dropped on September the 2nd, 2019. And the music video for that song would feature that video of his ops saying that he was responsible for the killing of Can't Get Right, as well as footage from his arrest in O-Block and courtroom footage from the Atlanta case with Lil Durk. This song is an introspective and deep track about what it's really like living the gang life in Chicago. Von would rap about getting to jail and being given knives to defend himself, Ops trying to work out who killed their friends, and rapping that when he was in jail, he caught somebody who killed one of his friends and beat them up, even saying that he was in jail with D. Rose, that same shooter who was allegedly at the scene of the Lil Mark murder with Von, rapping that he was there in a cell when D. Rose got sentenced to 40 years in prison for a 2014 murder of a teenager, with Von rapping that witnessing D. Rose get sentenced to all of these years really hurt his soul. Von would end that song with a heartfelt outro, saying that the same cops that locked up his friends D. Rose, C. Day and Rondo number 9 told him that they were out to get him too after he caught his murder in 2014. Von said that the cops were trying to catch him and his friends like it was a game, but really this was just Von taunting those cops who were never able to catch him for the things he'd allegedly done. Ironically, just the day after dropping a song about the cops trying to arrest him, it is a game, it's a game of cat and mouse. Arrest him, the cops would arrest Von for battery on September the 3rd, 2019, after apparently beating up a man who called his girlfriend Asian doll a bitch in the studio, with Von admitting openly on Instagram Live that he just beat somebody up for his girlfriend. Somebody called my girlfriend a bitch today. Tell him what happened to my hand, bro. Was over beat his ass. Von would be in jail and not posting to his own Twitter account for just over a month, but while he was inside, his music kept on releasing, all in the lead up to his grandson volume one mixtape. On September the 10th, 2009, 19, Von would appear on a song called For A Fact with another rapper called Sim Santana. And on this song, Von would rap that he's killed and would do it again, as well as a lyric where he says that all of his bodies are headshots and that tweeting about the murders has attracted the attention of the cops, as well as lines about catching ops and killing them by bus stops seemingly a reference to the death of Little Mark. But it would be three days later when Von would bless the fans with the song that they had been true. It's okay when the fans, you know what I'm saying? It's okay when people just listen to lyrics. And, and, and they they sing along, they draw. The, you know what I'm saying? They 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 shocked at the lyrics. But it be killing me when they get to putting stuff together like this. Like I do reactions to music, and I don't even be 
Maybe it's because where I'm from, but I'm not putting together nobody's historical beefs. I'm not trying to piece together nothing. I'm not doing that. Now, I get that this is trap job, but dang, huh? And it's probably nothing that nobody else has already said, you know, but, but golly, all of it together in three and a half hours is like, oh, man. What he waiting for as Crazy Story Part 3 was finally released. This was another op-shooting, storytelling anthem and the most significant release leading up to September 19 when his grandson Volume 1 mixtape would come out. This was a roaring debut for Von with the project landing at number 75 on the Billboard 200. And this project had some crazy song concepts like the track F Your Man which is a love song where Von raps about seducing a woman with a boyfriend and vowing to kill him for her. Along with numerous lyrics about killing ops and catching bodies as well as shooting up funerals. He also had another song with Lil Durk called Twin Nem, where Durk says that Von shoots people and that they got caught shooting on camera with no masks on, seemingly a reference to their Atlanta shooting case. Von raps outright that he tries to kill people, ironically saying that he can't speak on what he's doing because the feds are watching him. You know, whilst rapping about what he's doing on his Billboard charting mixtape. He also had the pop rap love song No Flaws, where he sings to a woman about how dangerous and handsome he is. He also had a song Mama's Boy, where he says that his mother is who raised him into the robbing savage that he is today. He also references beating up K.I. on the train on this song. Von was putting out a lot of bold statements on this project, and surprisingly, with all of this coming out whilst he was still behind bars. Say hello to a new way to rent. I was wondering, see, I had just looked up before this came out, I had just looked up Trap Laurel. So I was like, mm, he ain't trying nothing in a minute. He was cooking up, boy. I know this took four months to edit, didn't it? Two months at least, a month, two months. Von would get out of jail on October the 10th, 2019, being released and returning to Twitter immediately, continuing to push and promote his new mixtape, as well as announcing that he would be going on tour to perform his new hits live. And Von would go on to play huge shows with his fans going crazy, and he would waste no time beginning to tease new music soon after his mixtape dropped, specifically the first single of his next project titled 2AM, a song where Von rapped the brazen lyric, can't put no more guns in my videos because the ATF and DEA know they ain't props. And after this release, Von would claim to be receiving multi-million dollar record deal offers. But while Von was getting more and more famous, so too were the rumors of him being a real killer, and his incriminating lyrics weren't helping matters either. During this period, it seemed like Von would simultaneously be claiming to have really done all of these murders in his music, but then at other times, being desperately trying to convince his following. What motivates y'all? Like, no, nah, I'm, I'm serious. I'm asking a real question. What motivates people to hear some lyrics, then go piece it together, then actually write it down and keep up with it, then hear some new stuff, then see something on the news, then go back and, and like keep writing it. Like what motivates? Like some of them just do it just to like comment it in the comments and then don't even like make a video about it and make no bread about it. Like it just be wild to me. That's dedication. That's dedication. If that level of dedication was placed somewhere else, a lot of people would be rich. That's crazy. That he never did anything. On his November 29th release, the song Rollin' with fellow rapper and accused double murderer YNW Melly, Von would rap that he has killed so many people they should call him Rambo, and saying, I did it, but it wasn't me, which perfectly sums up his attitude during this time, jumping on songs and saying over and over again, that he really is the killer they say he is, and then jumping on Twitter to say that he would never do anything like the rumors say he did. He would tweet after this release, saying that somebody is trying to send him to jail every day. And in December, Von would appear prominently on Lil Durk's Family Over Everything compilation album for his OTF record label, with the front cover of this project ironically resembling a suspect board for a criminal investigation, with Von positioned as an underboss under Lil Durk. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if the feds just downloaded this image and added it to the case file. But a few days later, on December the 14th, 2019, 19, Von does a post on social media saying that he is all these dead people want to talk about in heaven. Rest in piss to the goofies. I wouldn't be the savage I am today if it wasn't for y'all. It seemed like Von was really getting more and more comfortable saying that he was a killer publicly. The following week, on December the 21st, 2019, Von does a feature for the rapper Little Loaded where he raps that he put that boy in a. The 21st, 2019, Von does a feature for the rapper Little Loaded. All right, Peter, both of them where he raps that he put that boy in a box. But not long after this song dropped, Von would go live on Instagram in the car telling fans that he has bodies and even going as far as to ask them to guess how many people he's killed. 
and asking the fans if they think that it's more than five bodies, and even seemingly swearing on O.D. Perry's life that he has killed more than five people. Body into a time. And I got a lot of bodies. Tell them I got a lot, BJ. They know. Just free, how many I think? Tell them you stop playing. Nah, fuck him. Nah, you can't hate me. Hey, look. What y'all think? What y'all think? Or y'all think his ass all cap? More than five. What y'all think his ass all cap? More than five? Maybe he cap. I'll take it out. I'll take it to that. Oh, you ain't? It's all shit. Oh, oh, more than five. Oh, more than five. Ah, shut up, shut up. Saying numbers. <laughs> they put numbers up there. <laughs> they put numbers up there. No, no, I'm just playing, man. We saw this stuff. I really talk. You know. Hey, y'all. Get off that. Get off that scary shit, y'all. Hey. What band is that? Y'all getting scary. Stop being so scary. There you go. Get out of here. 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 Okay, damn. <laughs> Von was either feeling invincible or just being completely reckless. He would tweet a couple of days after Christmas 2019, beat the odds time and time again without doing no funny stuff. Stay in 10 toes. I done chased and beat up the guys that you were claiming was gangster. And I got fans all over the States. One of the realest and rawest people you'll ever meet. You're welcome as well as saying F his dead ops. Going into 2020, Vaughn was still winning, tweeting that it now costs $20,000 to book him for a show and then announcing a huge booking opening for G Herbo on his PTSD tour. Clearly stacking that paper, in February, Vaughn was going live in the bank, making a large deposit, impressing the bank manager. Posting that crazy. What's up, my You good? Yeah, good they man. feed me. Ain't nobody <laughs> with you, is it? <laughs> his ass. Nobody safe. But soon Von's bank account was about he wasn't pressing him. He was just making jokes. to go to the next level. Because at the end of February, he would release one of the biggest songs of his career. His hit track, Took Her to the O. Another storytelling type track with a catchy chorus where Von shouts out O Block. But this time, it wasn't some random made up story. This was a song all about him meeting a woman who leads him to his rival from Tukerville turned rapper, FBG Duck. Von ends the song saying that he shoots Duck, literally rapping that he killed him and left him on the curb. With this supposedly fictional FBG Duck murder scenario being reenacted in the music video of the song too. We know it's fictional. <laughs> the day that Von released the video, he would tweet saying that everything he says in his music is made up and that he's just rapping to make money for his family. And I'll be honest, I believe this is where we see Von's psychopathic tendencies really shining. Not only had he seemingly killed people and occasionally attempted to deny it on Twitter, but this time he had actually made a whole song and an entire narrative music video about him personally killing FBG Duck. This but he didn't kill Duck. Well, not, you know, personally, allegedly. You know what? I don't know nothing. I'm just going to walk. This is someone he had openly been embroiled in a deadly feud for around a decade with at this point. Von was literally making videos telling the story of how he was going to kill FBG Duck, all while claiming on Twitter that his lyrics were just entertainment. But apparently they weren't, because allegedly behind the scenes, Von had put $100,000 of his hard-earned rap money up as a bounty on FBG Duck's head. This is the kind of behavior that makes me feel King Von really was a serial killer, because no amount of success in the rap game was enough for him to stop killing people. Instead, his compulsion to kill, or at least to commission killings, was just too strong. He would continue to allegedly use his resources to have people killed behind the scenes. Oh, are you saying the song was a precursor, like a prelude to it? Could that make more sense? All while attempting to maintain a somewhat clean public image, despite all of the music that he was releasing celebrating murder. At the real real, luxury is. Which is allegedly true. That, that's what they say. to the O would get 1 million views in 24 hours. And at this point, Von was really one of the hottest prospects in the rap game, and fans would be hungry for his next full-length release, which came on March the 6th, 2020, when he dropped his new mixtape, LaVon James. Named after the famed NBA legend LeBron James, who had become a fan of Von's music along with his son. And Von would troll his ops by even purchasing a promotional billboard for the project on 63rd, as well as releasing Not From 63rd merchandise. Unfortunately for Von, however, the project itself would end up debuting precisely 
at number 63rd on the mm. Billboard charts. Sometimes I see stuff like this and I just feel like it must have been God just making fun of Von for all the bad things he did in his life. Because this was his biggest career achievement. But you know he must have been furious to have ended up charting at the one number that he despises. And Von would never even publicly acknowledge or tweet the chart performance of this mixtape, probably for that reason that it went 63rd. But landing at 63rd on Billboard was still a great performance for a relatively new artist with such violent and raw content. The project itself would be laced with more aggressive drill anthems, like the track Down Me with Lil Durk, where Von raps about getting doctors to bring people back to life so he can kill them again, and killing so many ops that the surviving ones don't have any friends left. There would also be the song Bro Cops, where he seemed to reference calling for the hit on Can't Get Right. Then there was the track Don't Wanna Be Me, where Von explains that his mindset growing up had to be either him or me. He'd reminisce on hearing gunshots the night he moved into Oblock as a child, and his experience growing up around killers and criminals and having to fight every day. He would rap about being devastated at the loss of his right-hand man T-Roy, and explaining how losing Sheroid, OD, and Platoon turned him into a killer in 2012, ultimately describing the gory details of the bloody couple of months of killing that he was allegedly involved in in 2014. And during this time, Von also begun to post pictures of his friends from Oblock posing with large wads of cash and referring to them as Get Back Gang Entertainment, further blurring the lines between the music and the real gang killing people in the streets. A week later, Von would appear on his girlfriend Asian Doll's song, Pull Up, a track with jaw-dropping lyrics where Von claimed to have killed seven people in total at this point, saying that if he catches three more, he's at double digits. A day after that release, Von would tweet that girls hook up with him just so that they can say that they were with a killer. Next, he appeared on the song Get Back Mode with Oblock veteran Boss Top, where he rapped that he was stacking up bodies like Tetris. All of these murder anthems were doing numbers, and the money was rolling in for Von. He would graduate from buying his mother Gucci purses, soon flexing on Twitter that he had just bought her a brand new Mercedes and large suburban home. Von's career was going from strength to strength, and he was showing no signs of letting up. On April the 29th, 2020, he would drop his new single, Grandson for President, coming with lyrics where he says that they're trying to blame him for all the unsolved murders in his city. He'd rap that he's trying to kill all of the ops, and he would end his verse saying that he could kill you by rapping on the beat or by shooting you in the street. And Von would promote the music video for this song on Instagram, adding a caption with seven skulls, asking people how many they have, sparking speculation that this was him cryptically telling the world once again that he had killed seven people to promote this song. Or he was just playing the part that y'all gave him. He was just trolling. You know what I'm saying? And that, that could be part of it. A few days later, he appeared on the song Body Count with Mozzie and G Herbo, rapping that if you have a few bodies, everyone will know. A couple of days later, Von would tweet that he can't get a job now because he has more bodies than TK, a teenage rapper who got 55 years for murder. Von would also tweet that he's done more hits than made hit songs. And then, on May 21st, 2020, a vlog was released which showed Von going back to Oblock, aka Parkway Gardens, to hand out wads of cash to his gang. And it would later emerge that Von was providing drugs and guns to his old hood and splitting the rewards with his crew, providing them with jewelry and luxury vacations in exchange for their work in the streets. Von clearly didn't care about broadcasting his activities to the world, and eventually, people began to take notice. On May the 22nd, YouTuber Trap Geek releases an iconic video on King Von titled The Soft Spoken Assassin. This video essentially that. broke down Von's violent past and his rise to the top of the rap game. One murder of a kid named Modell, allegedly, according to the internet detective- You shouldn't even have showed this. All these, all these, all of these are the same. They just, you know, go study the last one, add the new information, and just put their little spin on it, which, you know, that's, that's, that's all YouTube is, but anyway. It's on Reddit, has King Von's name written all over it. And Von didn't seem to initially appreciate the attention, tweeting that the videos these white people are all making about him aren't true, and calling them the cops, or 12. However, a month later, Von seemed to have a change of heart, and he would actually begin to use that nickname that Trap Geek gave him as a caption on his Instagram, declaring himself to be a soft-spoken assassin. Two days later... Oh, sure. he just be going with the narratives y'all gave him. Steven says it more about my story. Von tweeted that he still has people on his list, presumably referring to a list of people he still wants to kill. And it seems that the biggest name at the very top of that list was FBG Duck. Von had been going back and forth with Duck since high school and had a years-long grudge against him. He'd had a Twitter exchange with Duck the day before he'd allegedly killed KI, 
who was a close friend of Duck's, an exchange where Von said that he was also looking for Duck. In fact, a couple of months after King Von had released the music video for Took Her to the O, that video where he played out his fantasy of killing Duck, Duck would go live saying that he beat up Von on the school bus back in the day. Duck would also tell Von that he's only famous because of Lil Durk. You come up under dirt. When y'all get mentioned, y'all get mentioned as Lil Durk homies. But here's where things get chilling, because as Duck continues to mock Von in what seems to be a disrespectful, but at least not entirely death-threatening way, Von would pop up, following along live and demonically commenting on Duck's Instagram names of people that Get Back Gang had seemingly killed, and continuing to insult him throughout the entire live. It seemed like Von was plotting on having Duck killed for years. In November 2018, King Von would be on live, apparently in Lil Durk's Atlanta home, expressing his desire to see FBG Duck dead, saying that he would perform at his funeral whilst eating some cereal. Yeah, cereal be busted, so. I told y'all that Ben loves cereal. This is just, it's more to my point. It's, what time is it? They say King Von featuring FBG Duck. That's what they want to see, huh? Stop that, man. I'll perform at his funeral. We $49 suits are here. This know that Von had allegedly put up a $100,000 bounty on FBG Duck's head. And funnily enough, Von tweeted throughout his career that his main goal was simply to make $100,000. And when Von was finally rich, less than a month before Duck was killed, he would tweet, Von got the money, so Von gonna pay it to his brothers. And he would also later rap on the song Me and Doody Low that he gave out a hundred, so you can bet that they're coming. In July 2020, Von would also show off O Block chains that he had purchased for his friends from the famous hip hop jewelry store Icebox. Something that we now know may well have been an Damn, just labeled Icebox a hip hop jewelry store? They more than that. <laughs> they just cater to hip hop artists because they can make fancy nice pieces. Good quality. Incentive provided to Von shooters to continue to catch bodies for him. And soon we would see the tragic reality of this situation playing out on the streets of Chicago in real time. On the afternoon of August the 4th, 2020, FBG Duck is shopping in the Gold Coast, a place that's been described as the Rodeo Drive of Chicago, a high-end and high-profile tourist shopping district. After being given Duck's location, six shooters were sent from O-Block to kill him. They were Charles Liggins, aka C-Murder, to Carlos Offord, aka Los Munna, Marcus Smart, aka Muwop, Christopher Thomas, aka C-Thang, Kenneth Robertson, aka Kenny Mack, and Zell Munna. After being provided with his location, two vehicles end up 30 minutes away from O-Block, pulling up to the location where Duck had been shopping. Then, at about 4.37pm, Duck would be confronted outside of the Dolce & Gabbana store by a group of masked individuals hopping out of two cars and opening fire on Duck in broad daylight. A man and a woman who were standing with Duck at the time of the shooting were both injured, but fortunately survived. And someone would even post well, a tweet. even tell the whole story. Shorty was shooting back, too. The one that was with him, that was his girl, right? She was shooting back. 12 minute video depicting the crime scene immediately after Duck's death, with Duck being seen writhing in pain on the ground in the final moments of his life. Once again, this situation just drives home the destruction these killers were so willing to inflict on the street. It's weird because the theory is the police could have saved Duck because if y'all watched that video, a lot of y'all seen that. They was just sitting there. They could have been doing something, holding, pre putting pressure on wounds, doing something, you know what I'm saying? But they did nothing. Streets that they lived in and to the fellow citizens who live there with them. I'm in the Gold Coast right now. They shot FBG Duck, man. I don't know who shot him, man. I just- I remember this day like it was yesterday too. I, I was uh, I was on my way out the door. I was getting on my motorcycle. I was on my way out the door. And my boy hit me up. He was like, hey, they just got Duck out here. They got Duck. He out here on the ground. I'm like, dang. On with my day. <laughs> They ran into this, y'all. Man. They shooting in the Gold Coast of Chicago, bro. Chicago is not a safe place to be. You cannot even go downtown and enjoy your day without violence, bro. Look at this, bro. Look at this, bro. That was like, I swear, I feel like that was like a one in a million thing. Like, that would never, that. I can't remember that happening before. Not in that area. Not broad daylight, not in that area. That's a Chicago rapper, man, by the name of FBG Duck. After Duck's passing, 
This brazen broad daylight hit would make international news, with reporters comparing the killing to a Chicago mob boss hit from the 30s. On August 4th, 2020, it looked like an old time outfit attack here on Chicago's Oak Street. Two attack cars, four shooters, and a hail of bullets. But the target wasn't a 1930s gangster. He was a new millennium rapper, FBG Duck. It would appear that only seven minutes after the killing of FBG Duck, King Von would tweet a goat emoji, seemingly congratulating himself for pulling off a hit that he had wanted to do for more than 10 years. This was quite possibly the ninth murder that King Von was responsible for and the 11th that he had allegedly been connected to. And perhaps Von soon realized that he shouldn't be celebrating this one too. The list is crazy. Too hard. Because the following day, he would tweet denying being involved and saying that everybody blames him. Von would later tweet, that him and Duck settled their differences before his death, suggesting that they were even going to make a song together. This to me seems like an obvious lie, once again showcasing the psychopathic tendencies that King Von had when it came to killing. In public, he would say anything he could to take the heat off himself and appear innocent, but behind closed doors, he had allegedly plotted, paid for, and was celebrating Duck's murder. Von and other O Block affiliates would go on to release song after song referencing the murder of Duck. The day after Duck's death, King Von and Dirk dropped their new song, All These N Words, a track which doesn't have any specific lyrics pertaining to Duck, but in it, Von would rap about having bodies from way back, and the song's release essentially served as a victory lap for Von, Dirk, and anyone else who would have been happy about Duck's demise. OTS Duty Low would reference people getting killed whilst shopping on the song Me and Duty Low with King Von, with King Von saying outright on the track that he gave out 100,000 and sent his boys coming, as well as saying that somebody got left shot in public before being rushed to the hospital. With these four lines of rapping, Von essentially broke down the entire hit and the price he'd allegedly paid for it to happen. Von would also rap on the song Don't Miss with DQ that Duck got nailed no hammers, as well as lyrics that seemingly refer to the funeral shooting and the killings of Modell and Doc. On the posthumously released track Shameless Remix with Boss Top, Von would also rap that he's ducking no beef, and even Lil Durk would later release the song Should Have Ducked, dissing FBG Duck and saying that he's smoking him. Lil Durk would take things to the next level, even joking with country music star and collaborator Morgan Wallen that he loved duck hunting. This would lead to Wallen posting duck emojis on Dirk's post and later being forced to apologize after being informed that he'd actually been tricked into- <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, that is ridiculous. He didn't trick the country musician? Dissing Lil Durk's dead ops. Can you be skipping? Is this a Vogue commercial? Discover. Can I skip this one? Duck was killed, it seemed like King Von and his team truly felt invincible. And pretty much from here until the day he died, King Von didn't seem to care who knew about the killings he was allegedly responsible for. In his music and on social media, he would troll endlessly and hint towards him and his friends being real killers, seemingly oblivious or just not caring that the whole world was beginning to learn what he had done. In August, Von is on Instagram Live with DQ from Oblock saying that there's no more FBG. All that dissing, saying something, or even acting like y'all with some Hey, y'all know for sure I ain't with. I'm gonna smack that on y'all. I ain't gonna play like that. See, and we know y'all ain't gangsta. Y'all on the internet. We know y'all ain't gangsta. Y'all ain't trying to do that. Ain't oh. no more FB. Ain't that right, Big DQ? Ain't that right? <laughs> Von would also tweet that he knows the police have his phone tapped and that all they'll find out is that he gives people money every day. Money for what though, Von? Von would also go on to tweet that 60... You know, to support their families. Third was no more. And another saying, You heard what they say I did, but I did worse. Indicating that Von had done even more crimes that the public didn't know about. After this, we would see one famous example of King Von's crimes catching up with him in the music industry. He had actually been booked to perform at Rap Music Festival Rolling Loud in 2020. However, the pandemic of 2020 would shut that down and see the festival unable to go ahead in person. So instead, Rolling Loud would end up hosting a digital live stream event with rappers in September of 2020. And as part of this event, King Von would be interviewed in a shocking segment where the hosts were asking him questions that had been sent in from the comments, with some oh, bright wow. Chiracologist submitting 
directing a question to the unsuspecting hosts who would read it, asking Von if he would ever collab with names of people he was rumoured to have killed. With Von even being so amused by this question bringing up his old bodies, he would even go and find his trusty shooter Muwop putting his face on camera to show the reaction to these clueless interviewers dissing their dead enemies. They want to know if you do a feature with Modell, P5, Malcolm, you know them? Nah, all right, never mind. There, we already. He already told us about Tuca. He said Tuca, one of his favorites to work with. All right, they yeah. want to know about the Gleesh Place video. How does some of these people come in with no, not knowing the history, not studying who they about to interview? They just got. They just read the questions like y'all got to know something. Y'all just hired to just do the interview. Y'all don't know nothing about the culture, nothing that's going on in this. Oh, Gleesh Place coming soon, and I do a piece with all of them. Don't just send them money. It's, it wasn't funny that the Danes or, the, or the, anything. It was funny how ignorant they were to it. Yeah, we need that bag. 100 oh, racks. Bag. 100 racks of feet. Oh, I think they got it. <laughs> <laughs> My boy charging 100 racks. Don't get me started. I'll be ticking. Y'all don't know me. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't be ticking on this. <laughs> Say the name to one of the features again. Uh, He'd have to scroll up. I can't even see hey. that. Y'all listen to the names he said wanna do the feature. We'll we'll get a clip of it and we'll ta we'll send it to you. Um I right, send the names. Listen to the names he said wanna do a feature with. Um they wanna know if you'd ever do a song with Young and Ace, Jada Youngin, or and K I don't know who that K artist. No, say the other names you said. You gotta scroll up so I can read that. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Hold on. It was No, nah, scroll up a little more, a little more. If you do a feature with Modell, Tyreek, P5, or Malcolm. Build <laughs> Look out, folks. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's a no, right? I'm assuming that's a no. Hey, I'm just so oblivious. Oh, Y'all can't even see the, the guy's face behind me. He's just so happy to be there. <laughs> Look, he's just so happy to be there. So I thought, you know, some police. <laughs> I don't even. Who are those? I, I don't, am I supposed to know who they are? Yes, the you are the interviewer. Yes, you're supposed to know who they are. It was there. You bogus. Now just clear. What's that? Let's go to the next question. No, that's crazy. They had me violate like that. And you went that fuck sixty third. Now just clear. <laughs> the day after this, Von would tweet saying, "Who wants clout? If you diss Von." He will put you in the clouds. Possibly another reference to FBG Duck's murder, whose nickname was of course Big Clout. A day after this, Von would take to Instagram Live, saying that he's tired of people judging him because of YouTube videos about him. Yeah, I think y'all know me because I watch YouTube. And y'all listen to what these people tell y'all. Y'all stupid, huh? oh yeah. Y'all listen to what the people tell y'all. Y'all people tell me bad. Why y'all? Me people tell me over there. It's cool. Yeah, what they gotta do. I forgot to do what they gotta do. Y'all don't know me. I ain't no no super tough, no super gang. That's just what's going on. That's what I am. That's what's going on. So I'm laughing. I'm smiling around here because I'm the I'm super gang. This was an epic Instagram Live where Von would go in depth on a lot of things showcasing both sides of his personality. He would say that he's really a gangster like the videos say, but that he's also smiling about it because it makes him laugh, before also reminding fans not to play with him because he really is dangerous. I'm super gang. I'm like that, but I ain't known that. You see what I'm saying? I'm smiling, I'm playing with y'all. But don't play with me like that. I don't play with nobody like that for real. King Von would tell his fans that him and his O Block homie Louie kill their ops. Can you lie up? Dick, I'm dick sucking ass on King Dave. Got to fuck with them niggas on King Dave, okay? Don't trip. I ain't even gonna talk about that no more. I wish Louis would rah, rah. Not as loud. Look at Louis Cooper. <laughs> We're anesthesiologists. I feel like the second, the second half of this is just a lot of like showing like lives and doing this and doing that. And begins to ask the audience which ops he should talk about. Man, who has to talk about it? I'm on the road today. I'm from right out today. Who? Who to talk about? Drop a name on my.
Von goes on to say that people are just mad because he's tough and handsome, and because he knows that he did violent things to people who were in the comments on this live. With Von even going as far as to say to his viewers, if he did something to you or your family, comment below and he will pin it. Hey, you hey, I know you hey, no, me, I, are you I know you behave because I look like this and I'm tough like I am. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that shit hurt. <laughs> and I did shit on you. I, I seen I did shit too. <laughs> yeah. That shit hurt. <laughs> I got to say your name on it. I look at the looking. I got the. Comment and I'm a pin y'all I did something to you. Let's see how funny this guy. So we ain't you ain't do shit to me. My cousin maybe. Or if I did something to somebody, yeah, nah, this man. We making this street shit look good. Man, this street shit all bad on King Day. I done lost everybody. I'm poor now, yeah. Everybody dying, everybody in jail, everybody dead, I'm being Floyd, you know. Von was really careless during this period of his life. He really comes across as if he never thought he would get caught, or as if he simply didn't realize that the whole world technically he never did was listening to him. He would continue to tweet, saying that he would be ready to drop soon, and asking fans what they want him to drop, a song or an op. Then on the 4th of October, another Instagram live of Von would surface, showing Von getting off a plane with one of the shooters accused of killing Duck, Muwop, with Von even telling fans that Muwop has all type of bodies. This Muwop, he crazy. He got all type of bodies. <laughs> 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 Look at him. Come on, Muwop. Come on, mom. Come on. <laughs> My bodyguard. Come on, bodyguard. On October the 9th, Von drops the song I Am What I Am with Fabio Foran rapping more lyrics seemingly referencing the murder of FBG Duck, aka Big Clout. The same day, Von would tweet, bragging to have done everything people say they did in the streets, and in Von's case, getting away with it. Then, on October the 14th, 2020, Von releases a song called Slide with another rapper called Yak Yola. This song is a reinterpretation of FBG Duck's Slide. own hit song of the same name, Slide. But of course, Von would use his version of Slide to mock Duck. Two days after that, he would tweet the word Duck with a love heart and a picture of himself ducking his head down. Clearly, all of Von's brazen activities in the streets and online were indeed making him the target of an investigation. Because also in October, Von is at the airport when he was seen on social media being searched by the police and getting angry about the fact that he was being targeted. Uh, I can get your ID one more time. You can take a picture of my badge. Y'all want to search me for what? I can get you a sir. This is real quick. You took a picture of my ID, man. You already took a picture, man. Uh, Keep it moving. What y'all trying to search me for? Walking the path, right? right. Passengers to get through, so you gotta keep moving. Police, all of my shit, What the f wrong with these people? They took me out of search my bed for some drugs, all types of. Hey, matter of fact, look. This took a picture of my ID, got my address and everything. This man, I don't know this man, you see what I'm saying? You can remember his face. King, uh, wow, hear that. I don't know what the f going on. I got on the plane, time out. Von would share a picture of the officer who searched him to Instagram, even tagging superstar hip-hop lawyer Drew Findling, who also defended Donald Trump. But clearly, Von wasn't worried, because the same day that footage was going around, he would also tweet that he has bodies from way back, perhaps taunting those very cops who were stopping him at the airport trying to solve these murders. Around this time, King Von would also do an interview where he seemed to suggest that he was making the most of his career because he knew the cops would eventually work out what he'd done and put him away. I'm trying to go crazy real quick, but it's fierce, car. What? But not one to let some meddling cops get in the way of his booming rap career, a couple of days later, Von would drop his debut studio album, Welcome to Oblock, on October the 30th, 2020, a date which coincidentally was the anniversary of T-Roy's birthday and the murder of P5. Welcome to Oblock had some bold songs, where Von would hint further at the crimes he'd allegedly committed. And ironically, the very first lyric of that album well, The first was half was way more entertaining than the second half. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, it's still giving us information, but a lot of the information is we've seen it. See Von admitting that the cops are onto him. By this point, Von's lyricism was the sharpest it had ever been. And he really did have a talent for using music to communicate the dark reality behind the life that he had lived. Another line on that opening track, Armed and Dangerous, really stuck out to me, where Von raps that he has inflicted tragedies, massacres, and casualties on his ops, admitting that he did a lot of things to people that he can't remember, but he knows that they remember him. 
He would reminisce on October 2012 when he had allegedly killed numerous people, rapping that people were dying all of October and that it's the real Halloween. There was also the track Demon, where Von would open up about becoming a killer after the death of his friend White White, a track featuring a lyric where he claimed to have killed seven people, saying bodies I got a few, four plus three, three plus two. This is a line a lot of people assumed meant seven kills and five assists, or killings that he was present for, but my interpretation of this would actually be that it's Von saying that he killed seven people personally before he became a rapper, and five people who were killed by his crew, either while he was allegedly present, like in the case of I have no interpretation of it. Lil Mark, or allegedly on his orders, like would have been the case with FBG Duck. Hell, some people would even count Dooski to King Von's body count, because after all, Von would claim that he was smoking Dooski after his death, having tweeted not long before that that you can only smoke somebody if you had something to do with killing them. If you include that, that would make a full 12 bodies that King Von has been associated with over the years. Combine that with the fact that Von would end this song by boldly saying FFBG Duck, then I think it becomes pretty clear that he's trying to take responsibility for this killing. Another song on the album called The Code would see King Von rapping about splitting $100,000 with his team and being goated, a line that hits different when you know that he allegedly paid $100,000 to have Duck killed and tweeting a goat emoji immediately after the murder took place. Von would only be alive for around a week following the release of this project, but recording numerous songs and freestyles that referenced his alleged murders, like King Von's Audio Mac Bless the Booth freestyle where he straight up rapped that he had seven bodies. On the 2nd of November, he would tweet that people want to kill him with a yawning emoji. Clearly, Von was not scared. In fact, one of the very last things that Von did was an interview with DJ Academics, and a big part of this interview was the discussion of Von's beefs. Academics would press Von about his earlier tweets, suggesting that Von had been lying about him and FBG Duck squashing their beef, with Von denying that he was lying and suggesting that somebody else had deleted their DMs. You, you know you and you know you uh, Duck didn't make up. His mom came Ooh. out and said, you, you and Duck didn't Gang, how you gonna tell, see, that this, see this, 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 this ain't right. His mama was not there. I ain't never met his mama. I don't know his mama. You see what I'm saying? I've talked to him. You see what I'm saying? They, they, and then they deleted all I, I DM so I can't show him the. I don't know why they do that. From here, a flustered King Von will try and sidestep his past beef with Duck, saying that they just went to school together. They just make it look real crazy to y'all. These just really people we all went to school with. Nah, that shit do look crazy to me. I kid you not. That's, that's I, how they, that's how they make them. But they, like, yo. you got to understand, like you said, they right there down the street. We went to school. That's a fact, man. At one point, everybody was cool. But you know, clicks form, things happen. Nah, it, ain't, it ain't just, you know, and then, you know, it's just that we, we ain't cool no more. It, it, it was, you know. But it ain't that serious, like it's to the point where I right, let's now let's talk about it. It ain't that's yeah, both of us rapping, we can we can figure something out. We need to stop this, all the violence, all the shit, that shit. That shit. We got a voice, you see what I'm saying? Like if we tell Chicago fall back, so Chicago fall back. Eventually academics would ask Von how he felt when he heard about Duck's death, and Von would start slowly eating cereal, saying that he was hurt by Duck's death in an incredibly unconvincing manner. Were you saddened by the news that he was murdered then? Bro, in the car eating cereal, dry cereal. You see what I'm saying? Like when he was trying to piece together the cereal, the cereal Twitter comments. No, I like cereal. This is common. A lot of Chicago do love cereal because sometimes that's all that was there to eat. And you know, you could eat cereal all day because it's a bunch of different ones. Love cereal. I love cereal. I eat cereal breakfast, lunch, and dinner yesterday. Like it's all good. But that's her. I didn't go to sleep that night. I can't believe that. At a certain point, Von tells academics to hold on. He would then point the camera away from his face, and we would hear what sounds like Von and his friends laughing off camera. And before Von came back on camera, for a very brief moment, we got a glimpse of Von's friend from O Block, BJ, laughing in the background. Hold on, man. Oh, this time, let's talk about some other shit, though. Oh, this time, let's talk about some other shit, though. Oh, this time, let's talk about some other shit, though. Look like he on the phone with somebody. I see headphones. He having his own conversation. I can't help but notice the fact that Von is eating cereal whilst discussing the killing of Duck. Well, you eat just, just, just um, cereal straight out of the box? No milk? I'm a gangster. I've said it before that I believe Von was a serial killer, but honestly, he's mentioned serial so many times during his career 
It really wouldn't surprise me if this was some kind of crypt. It's not, bro. It's not. This, this is so much. This is the. This right here is the the, the hardest reach, of, probably of all time. Like I'm talking like Odell Beckham playing for New York Giants, reaching back for like it's so hard of a reach. Like let it go. That's not it. <laughs> There's multiple cereal bars in Chicago. I'm talking, you go in, it's a thousand cereals. Like I said, that people just love cereal. I mean, apparently, it's just a Chicago thing. People love cereal. Message that he was using to signal to fans that he saw himself as a serial killer with Duck as his latest victim. He would strangely tweet about how much he loves his cereal after a series of alleged murders in 2012, even tweeting that eating cereal is the first thing he does after shooting someone. He would promote Dirk's cereal whilst they were both on the run from the Atlanta shooting at the Varsity, telling people on Twitter to buy the cereal whilst waving a clip of a gun, and regularly posting himself on social media eating cereal. And he would also be eating cereal when he told the world that he wanted to perform at FBG Duck's funeral. Yeah, cereal be busting show. They said King Bond featuring FBG Duck. That's too, that's, too, that's, too, that's too much for me. Look, this is, this is, they gotta let the cereal thing go. Stop that, man. I get it, it's a cereal, it's a raps for a serial killer, but like, come on, bro, that's not it. I'll perform at his funeral. Then, when we finally saw the actual murder of FBG Duck and academics asked him about it, at that very moment, Von would decide to start eating cereal too. Maybe it's a stretch, but that day when Acad- Boy, it's a stretch. I'm talking yoga. I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. What's it called? Moaning dog or something cat? Whatever them stretches is called in yoga, it's one of them. Demix called Von. He probably knew he would be asked about FBG Duck. And he made sure to have that box of cereal within arm's reach so that the whole world would see him crunching on cereal at that exact moment. Sadly for Von, soon after this interview, he would end up on the other side of the gun, getting shot himself and ultimately losing his life. But in a final twist of irony, it would turn out that despite being connected to so many murders in his home city, Von would seemingly end up losing his life in an altercation in another state and as a result of a petty rap beef that had nothing to do with his violent past in the street. Find what you love. Throughout King Von's career, he was connected to a female rapper by the name of Asian Doll, with fans often speculating on whether their supposed relationship was genuine or simply a fake celebrity romance for clout. Apparently, Asian met King Von just after Lil Durk had signed to the same label as her, with the label arranging a celebrity basketball game where Durk would bring Von onto the court whilst Asian Doll was on the sidelines. It's the first time I saw we was in all oh, at a, just the basket. It's out here, we was in New York. Team Lil Booty over there in the square, look. You know, I ain't, I ain't saying that to her. She was looking decent as she was looking good. Well, I ain't saying that too, and she all like that hooping and Then they ain't had no jewelry and all that shit, no money like that. So I'm like, like, she had a big ass Gucci glasses, Gucci this and Gucci that. And we was playing basketball against Meek and them, me and Dirk. Mm -hmm. and oh. Dirk had just got signed to my label, Alamo. So they're like, Asian, we having a, a celebrity basketball game. Do you want to do it? I'm like, hell yeah. I'll play basketball because they know I used to play basketball. So when they told me who to play, they like, Meek, Neil, Dirk. But so I remember Bone playing basketball. They playing, we, we sitting on the side. He playing, he was playing so much. Rough. I thought, why the f is he so rough? He was playing rough, y'all. Like, he was rough. Like, he was jumping up. He was doing all type of rough sh He probably was trying to show out the whole time for me. I ain't know. I'm looking at his ass like he crazy. Apparently, King Von would see Asian Dollar. Uh, you ever seen somebody that hoop that don't really know how to hoop? That's how they play. Again in the studio and at a release party with Lil Dirk where they would flirt and eventually agree to go on a date. But then I still again at the studio. She did a feature with Dirk. And I'm steady flirting with her, trying to talk to him. She left and shit. Then I see her again. Now I'm, I'm fake drunk at the love uh, release party for Dirk, for Dirk Al. I see her. But I ain't know she was fake talking to somebody else right there. But I'm still, I'm on her. I'm feeling I'm off the, uh, whatever, the, the licking and shit. So I'm grabbing her hand, shit, trying to talk to him. Vaughn just kept bothering me. And then I'm just like, bro, who is this boy? He just kept bothering me, bro. Bothering me, bothering, bothering me. We walking now, y'all. I don't even know this man. This man got his hand around my waist. I'm like, whoa. Now, I take Dirk phone, I get in his DM, like, talk to my brother, ooh. <laughs> and then she got all the DM from to Dirk. Him. I mean, talk to my brother, ooh, I'm taking that DM and shit. It's him, that's she hilarious. Said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. I said no a million, million times, no. No, 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 bitch. I said no so much, I got tired of saying no. I'm like, let me go on a date with you. 
As soon as I said, okay, I said, okay, this man bun called me in second. She said the number and she, I said, she live in Atlanta. Now, I right, when am I go to the crib? Now, Dirk out of town. He left his truck in my car. Persistence is key. He got a track off, baby, raw. <laughs> so I'm, ooh, I got Dirk car today. <laughs> so I'm, I go pick up and she, I tell her I'm going to take her out and she, King Von would actually pick up Asian for their first date in Lil Durk's Jeep Trackhawk, the very same truck that they caught their attempted murder charge in in Atlanta. But in the end, the date between Asian Doll and King Von was apparently a success. You know I ain't slow. I knew the Dirk car. I ain't thinking, like, oh my god, he got a car, they got 300 on me. I'm like, this Dirk car, because I had already seen Dirk post a car. But it made it was so cute, because I'm like, these sticking together, that's crazy. They, like, Dirk helping him out, letting him see the car for the weekend, just so it can impress me. So I got a little money. I only had like, I was. It's real. That's, 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 I feel like that's normal though. When you bros, when you bros with somebody, they're supposed to do that. That was high, like $600 a month. And a little outfit, a nice little outfit. My aunt, I put that on. <laughs> took some of Dirk cologne and shit. <laughs> <laughs> took his con shot. I'm gonna go pick up to got to eat and shit. So he came pick me up. He kept saying, he kept calling and making sure I was gonna get ready. He like, get ready. He had the date. You know why? Because Chicago females are send off. So he got, he had to, he was, hey, hey, stop, hey, for real, be ready. He cold. So he's, he had his jacket on. He was trying to give me his jacket, but he was cold. So I just got under his jacket with him. And then it's like my chest touched his chest. Our hearts touched each other's hearts. It's just, everything just connected when I hugged him after the first date. And then we went to the house. And he knocked that back down, didn't he? Ha, 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 you blew that down back Oh, didn't he? He put his key into your Barbie, didn't he? They would make a connection and eventually make their relationship official. Asian Doll would even release a song called Grandson about King Von on Valentine's Day 2019, with him appearing in the music video. In a March 2019 interview with Lil Durk, a shy King Von would reveal publicly that he was indeed dating Asian Doll. King Von, I was saying he in a relationship too. Yeah. Shout, shout out Asian Doll. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he go in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it, <laughs> <head>, man. <laughs> Who's you? He looking at you like, come on, man. It so it took the, it took the yeah. Vaughn would go on to drop light-hearted tweets about his super savage friends, laughing at people who only knew him online as Asian Doll's boyfriend. But the two of them would indeed be an item, and she would need to deal with the baggage of dating a super savage. When Vaughn got arrested for attempted murder, Asian would be in tears over her boyfriend's incarceration. I've been on the plane for twenty hours. Everybody, don't, I miss my, I was crying. I miss my boyfriend, my husband, everything. But I'm better. He didn't want me to be out here turned up, so I got all my crying out on the plane. Now I'm finna just turn up. Twisted T is a refreshing Dino Mike! My bad. Would even call Asian Doll from jail, joking that he would be beating her up when he gets home. Free my jail. I miss him. Me Man, what? <laughs> nah, it's clear. Tell my home, tell about you. I'm always talking about you. Always. Always. Well, I was about me. I was catching some about me, okay? What? You crazy? I hate to hear about anybody's love story. I don't want to hear about this. Easy. If it was good, right. yeah, I'm talking about you. I don't give no fuck about that. That's bad. I don't want to good bad. If it's bad, I'm on that with you. I'm being ass. Don't talk about nobody else. Nah, I'm just gonna be ass first. Ask questions later if it's bad. I ain't got time. Uh, I'm already beating your ass, man. I don't even know. You're not beating me up. <laughs> We're not going to do yeah. this. Eventually, Von would return home and be reunited with Asian Doll. But ironically, this time, it would be Asian getting Von in trouble. While out on bail for that attempted murder, King Von would end up getting into a fist fight with a man in a studio who had apparently called Asian Doll a bitch, being sent back to jail for a brief period. Somebody called my girlfriend a bitch yesterday. Tell him what happened to my hand, bro. Was over beat his ass. And despite Von winding up in jail for it, it would appear that Asian Doll would actually appreciate Von's protection, calling him her bodyguard on Twitter, with Von himself saying that he wishes she wasn't a rapper so that he could keep her home and protect her, saying that he doesn't trust her around other rappers. But isn't it nice to have somebody in the same industry as you? No, that ain't, I'd rather have, you know, I wish you, you know, 
I can't say I wish she wanted to rap or nothing like that. But it'd be better if I knew that she's at the house instead of going around all these people that ain't around and damn, I'm, what's going on? Now I'm just thinking, like, damn, what the fuck she doing? Why she answering the phone? And that's how she be feeling. She feel the same I just yeah. said that. Yeah. No, I yeah. understand. That's what I'm saying. Like, I wish my nigga was at the damn house. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, so it's the time when you didn't like a nigga and she had to work with him. I'm not going to say nothing because you know you got to be, like, right. be, you gotta be for sure with yourself, yeah. man. I know I'm that so. Von was clearly very possessive about Asian Doll even tweeting that he would kill somebody for messing with her. With that in mind, it's no surprise that eventually it would be another rapper that would seemingly get in between Von and Asia. And that rapper would be none other than Baton Rouge gangster rap superstar NBA Youngboy. Now, King Von had a strange relationship with Youngboy over the years. King Von would be dissing NBA Youngboy all the way back in February 2019. You f*** with Youngboy? Why? I'm just, damn! Damn. Man, hang up on your ass. But if like, you cheat, go ahead and say you f*** with him, hang up on your ass. In March 2019, King Von would also diss Youngboy again on social media, saying that his music is full of lies. Young boy talking about on this song, bro. What? He talking crazy on this man. Oh, yeah? He ain't even like that. Oh! On his ass, now. Nah. On his <laughs> ass. Cap. You got cap in your raps. You got cap in your hey. raps. But at other times, it seemed that Von quite admired young boy. He'd often play his music and even tweeted welcome home to him in August when he was free, as well as being seen on social media copying several of young boy's mannerisms and quotes. The boy is my grandma raised me. You hear me? You know I ain't no hoe. What up? My grandma raised me. You know I ain't no hoe. Perhaps King Von was looking to catch Young Boy lacking rather than admiring him, because clearly both Lil Durk and King Von were feeling competitive with NBA Young Boy during this period. In October 2019, Lil Durk would reply to a DJ Academics tweet claiming that NBA Young Boy was the best street rapper since. Uh, here go, here go, here go, here go, here go. DJ Academic again, stirring something up without even trying. The Chicago Wave, with Lil Durk suggesting that Von was a real street rapper who could actually compete with Young Boy. In February 2020, Von would tweet indicating that Youngboy was holding on to a song featuring both of them and telling him that he should release it. It would seem that Von and Asian Doll were on good terms around this time, with Von showing off a bunch of gifts and a love letter from her just a few days after Valentine's. However, by May 2020, Von would be tweeting that he was going for a rough breakup. Then the following month, tweeting that Asian Doll was acting crazy and trying to embarrass other women. But a few days later, Von would tweet seemingly indicating that he was back on good terms with Asian Doll. Then the following month, Von would tweet saying that he doesn't care what a woman does if it's not his girlfriend. Yeah, this is the thing, man. Chicago love is crazy love, man. Especially if you're in love with a street dude or a street female, like, like you gotta, you gotta be prepared for what come with that. Like Dirk said, welcome to death row, that, that'd be real. That's real, that's a real deal. Cause it's just like a street dude in general gonna love you different than a regular, regular, regular dude. Street dude don't gotta really be with you. So when he do put that love in the air, it's like he really mean it. You know what I'm saying? No matter what he may do show or, or you know, what other people see, like he really got love for you, period. And if you hurt him, it's going to, everybody and every, every, every person in the way is going to feel that. A few weeks after that, in August, Von would tweet saying that he takes things too far when he gets mad. And tweeting saying that people won't believe the woman that he just made a hit with. That same day, images would surface of Von spending private time with the mother of NBA Youngboy's child, a woman named Junia. And later, speculation swirled that Von and her may have even created a sex tape during their time together, after King Von tweeted that he could post a video that would make somebody stop claiming their own kids. And later, King Von's sister would also indicate that she had seen a video of Junia sleeping with somebody. This is our maker's... Damn, what the, come on now. So later circulate from somebody who was apparently with them when they met, suggesting that Von Engineer had indeed slept together, not recorded music. That's one of the worst things a baby mama could do is sleep with your, like, I, that is like, like, I, cause 
honestly, like, what are you doing? Who are you hurting at the end of the day? You only hurting yourself. You mad at me because I won't. I don't want to be with you, so you're going to go sleep with my eye. Now I'm never, ever, ever going to trust you. So I can never do nothing for you. Like, it's done. You embarrass me in the internet and in public. Like, it's over with. And Von would later rap on the song Rose Gold with PNB Rock, lyrics that seem to suggest that somebody's baby mother was bad in bed. One of his friends, 600 Breezy, would congratulate King Von publicly for sleeping with his op's baby mother and saying rapper K, suggesting that Von and his friends were looking to see NBA Youngboy dead. However, Junia would take to social media to deny the rumors and say that she was simply working on music with Von to make money for her son. Cut it out. <laughs> we walked to the table to play the little game after my studio session and I went home. That's it. Y'all trying to make stories out of nothing else. You sure about that? You sure about that? Nah, she could be telling the truth. But you know, Vaughn gonna blow it out of proportion and go, he gonna do what he gonna do. Like I said, I don't quit no n I've been working. We have a song coming out. Y'all wasn't supposed to know, but it is what it is. Have no. We, heard we have the a song? song coming out. So when the song come out, y'all gonna quit it. Just know it's hard as I'm just trying to get my money to take care of my son. <laughs> Period. On top of that, DMs would also circulate suggesting that Von had indeed only worked on music with Jania to make Asian Doll mad. However, Asian would later come out and claim that the story wasn't true about them working on a song together, suggesting that she had actually found romantic DMs between Von and the mother of Young Boy's child. Now I've seen that in them DMs. I've been seeing none of this is not a surprise. So all that song that the day after those pictures of Von's rendezvous with Junia surfaced, Youngboy would post a picture with a caption saying that he's going to make sure that his son grows up and sleeps with King Von's daughter since he's trolling him with his baby mother. And while this was all going on, another Chicago Black Disciple rapper close to King Von, Lil Reese, was claiming to be planning to beat up NBA Youngboy's artist, Quando Rondo. Quando would reply to this, saying that Reese won't do nothing. Man, a few weeks after this, King Von would seemingly threaten Youngboy and Quando Rondo, tweeting on September the 7th, 2020, that he hopes that God has room up there for more dead people. This seemingly provoked a response from Quando Rondo's right-hand man Lil Tim the next day, who warned Von and people from Chicago about messing with Quando. And this would seemingly be followed by a response from King Von the next day, tweeting, reminding the world that he has been fighting his whole life and that he hits hard as hell. The same day that all of this is going on with Von and Junior, NBA Youngboy would drop a snippet of an unreleased song. This song later turns out to be the track Dead Trolls. And in this song, Youngboy claims, like Von, to be responsible for seven murders. And rapping that he's going to catch someone from out of town who is chasing after a girl and kill them. Youngboy would also rap that his ops are mad because- it's crazy though. All, every, a lot of beats be over a female. That's tough. But like baby mama type female, that's different. <laughs> they can't get a feature from him perhaps a hint to a potentially uncleared collaboration between the two artists being held back by Youngboy as one of King Von's earlier tweets seemed to suggest. Some people would later claim that this song actually predicted King Von's death, with one lyric saying that he's planning to kill someone in Atlanta after a show. But chances are, that's just a creepy coincidence. But it's no coincidence that Youngboy dropped this snippet the very day that Von was running around with the mother of his child. A day later, Von would tweet claiming not to have a girlfriend and to simply be focusing on his career. But a few days after that, Von would tease a snippet of a new song of his own, a track titled Too Real. In this song, he would rap that he's going to expose somebody and that he's going to kill somebody because of a rap beef. Then, in September, Von would jump on Instagram Live to address his ongoing beef with NBA Youngboy, saying that he's not in beefs in the music industry and that he doesn't want to beef in other states, but also saying that he will beef people for no reason if they don't like him. Now, look, look, but everybody, I ain't into it, nobody, you Two of the people I've been had beef with in the streets, you know what I'm saying? I, I want to be a tour with nobody from all in another town for no reason. Like, you got to be a tour with somebody for a reason. Just know we a tour, we a tour, gang, okay? Not, 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 you see what I'm saying? I'm the type of I don't got to know why we a tour or nothing. I ain't, you only got to tell me why you don't like me. Don't even tell me why you don't like me. I don't even care. Just let me know you don't like me. You see what I'm saying? Let me know. How you don't like me? That's what it is. Let me know. I'm like, all right, what I'm saying, let me know. But I'm so gangster that I don't need a reason. I don't, it don't gotta be no reason. We can be into it, like, I don't care. It don't gotta be a reason, for real. I feel like that's how a lot of people is. Like, you don't like me, okay. It don't even really matter why you don't like me. You don't like me, so 
So my whole pre- my whole thing is if you don't like me, when you see me, you're going to do something to me. That's all I need to be known, really. I, I'm going to tell people, I, it don't got to be no real. I don't know why. I don't care why. But it can be that, you see what I'm saying? Well, I, I like to know why we into it. I like to, I, I need to, because I, I ain't no goofy. I ain't go to and then I play hard. I play. I ain't trying to lose. I ain't, yeah, I can't lose to nobody. On, oh, lose to who? Who? Who, Lloyd? Who I'm going to lose to? You've been knowing me, Louis. Don't I go hard and think I do? Know, Tell him, you, you, you came from. How you get a chain on your neck, Lou? You know how. Did I press pause? Come on now. I'm not drinking drink no Jack Daniels. Give me Hennessy or Douce or Remy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want good heart to burn. Wanting to prod young boy and just You know Clearly, Vaughn was still wanting to prod young boy, and despite tweeting that he still isn't doing relationships, in September, Vaughn and his sister were seen in the club with young boy's baby mama once again. Two days ago, Jania was spotted in the club with King Vaughn's sister, and King Vaughn was also there as well. You couldn't see them together, but you know they were together if you know. With all of this going on, Asian Doll would be feeling the heat. At the start of October, Asian Doll would go on Instagram Live to address the situation with young boy and Vaughn, denying that Vaughn embarrassed her and saying that if she's single, then it's got nothing to do with her. Nobody embarrassed me, gang. Y'all need to get off my dick with it. Like, nobody embarrassed me. Nobody. It's nothing nobody did to embarrass me. I was not embarrassed. Like, damn, y'all hoes mad about a tweet. Like, y'all, like, dude, don't even know you clowns. The f y'all hoes get left for me. The f Smack the shit out of one of you with me. You crazy. I don't get no. I'm a real bitch at the end of the day. Like I said, you would never see me sweat. You would never see me go outside behind nobody. I don't give a who you is, friend, anybody. Mind your business. When I'm single like that, don't have nothing to do with me. I'm not stressing that. Shit. I'm not tweeting about nothing. They don't have to do with me, gang. Nothing. When somebody's single, so what? What they do? I don't get no. That's what y'all problem. Von later went live on October the 11th, 2020. Oh, speak with Asian Doll, apparently their first live together since their breakup, with them appearing to be on fairly good terms. Also in October, King Von would begin tweeting to promote a new song called Mine Too, a song essentially dissing NBA Youngboy and saying that he's not going to beef about a girl because Youngboy's baby mama Junior is his too. He'd also have a lyric saying that he has beef in NOLA or Louisiana where Youngboy is from and saying that Youngboy is rapping like a gangster but now he's got to show Von whether or not he really is a gangster. After this snippet released, Von would tweet saying once somebody has slept with a girl, he doesn't want her anymore, with this possibly being a hint towards Asian Doll moving on to NBA Youngboy, with it actually being rumoured that Asian had met up with Youngboy at some point during this time, with later DMs from people in NBA Youngboy's camp suggesting that Asian Doll had indeed hooked up with Youngboy before King Von passed away. An Asian Doll would seemingly admit to hooking up with Youngboy twice on her song No Exposing. Apparently Youngboy even had access to Asian Doll's phone and Instagram account during the time they had spent together as he had reportedly messaged his producer through Asian Doll's Instagram account. And then, only days before King Von would end up losing his life, on November the 4th, 2020, Youngboy posts a snippet of a song that he made with Asian Doll, a song with the ominous title Meet the Reaper. Von would be seen listening to the snippet of this young boy and Asian doll song, later tweeting that the song is trash, followed by yet another tweet alluding to there being a sex tape between him and NBA Youngboy's baby mother. Von would then say that him and Jania's song is way better than Asian doll and NBA Youngboy's song. See, this is stuff that I have no idea about, you know what I'm saying? I'm taking all the information in, like, uh, this is all brand new to me, low key, because I don't be following the. Uh, well, yeah, we definitely knew, like, the reasoning behind everything was about a female, but I ain't even know saying, about these DMs. I don't be digging that deep. But it has a better cover up. Another hint that he might have had compromising pictures of the young boy's baby mother. Then Von would backtrack, saying that he's just playing and that if Asian Doll is happy, he's happy. But the song still sounds trash. 
then rehashing the lyric from his song Mine Too, once again indicating that Asian doll engineer are his girl too. The day before he was killed, King Von was incredibly active on Twitter. He would diss NBA Youngboy, tweeting that rappers are pussy and that he's not one of them. He would warn people to approach him with caution, and he would say that his ops are acting gangster, but that's not what they're really like. Tweeting that he's not hurt, just retaliating to the disrespect he's received with no feelings involved, suggesting that what was going on was just entertainment. With Von eventually saying in another deleted tweet, that he's going to lead by example because he's older than Youngboy and saying that he's quitting the beef because many wars have started over a woman and that he's not beefing Youngboy. He would say that they're sharing the same women and that doesn't matter. And then in King Von's last recorded interview before his death with DJ Academics, he would touch upon his beef with NBA Youngboy since coming into the industry. Von would deny that this was a real beef, saying that they have the same girls and the internet has just blown it out of proportion. You know what people told me? People told a lot of rappers are messing with the same girls, like the pool is shallow. For the, for the for for dudes that are in that position, like they only want to mess with a certain caliber of female. Even if a fan female is fine, like if, even if a fan is bad, like they're not gonna dig in there. They're not gonna put their image at risk. You know what I'm saying? They're not gonna do that. They don't know what kind of trying to come, what trying to come up they gonna be on or anything. You know, so the industry standard, you gotta mess with the industry standard. You know what I'm saying? You got you know, you gotta stay in that lane. Tell me you a young boy. They all like they they all they all for the team, but they trustworthy. You know what I'm saying? You can trust them with the as far as not trying to rob you, not trying to do no goofy stuff. Who's beefing or something like that? Uh, you said something about, about yo, what happened, Von? What's going on with you, man? <laughs> they be saying that a lot. It's like we got the same interests and, and, and holes and then you know how the internet will try to make it. Don't tell me I got problems over girls. No, it's the internet, gang. It's the, it's the, you know, they try to make it like that because it's the internet. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And then, and then, you know, how females, these females will try to make it like that because they females and they try to make it like one fuck with one hard and try to, it be just all type of shit. But it ain't nothing too serious, nothing that you should worry about. Unfortunately for Von, things would be very serious indeed. And the very night of that final interview, King Von himself would escalate things and get more than he bargained for. And little did he know that this feud over women would end up being the beef that would take his life. Yari. They put a whole song as a commercial. That's a, that's a, this is a lick. He had a lick for having a song as a commercial on this. Not with me though. So. Barely a week after the release of his debut album, Welcome to Oblock, King Von's story would come to an abrupt end. The week before his death, King Von would be reflecting on Instagram just how far he'd come and reminding himself to enjoy these times because he knew there would be hard times coming. Going through this shit, just losing so many people, gang. I lost so many people, man, going through this shit. Man, shit crazy. But now look where we at right now, you see what I'm saying? Like times like this, you gotta you gotta take it in. I just told my homie, y'all gotta take this in. You see what I'm saying? Look at phone. It's crazy how much of an influence and uh, how much of a how much how many people are interested in Vaughn in, in, in Chicago that, you know what I'm saying, X amount of time later, he can he can still garner this much attention on somebody else's platform. This is at like three million, approaching three million views. In in two days, in four days, I mean. I'm here with day one this shit. And we in this winning, man. We living on King. I really wish a Chicago person would have did this interview, you know what I'm saying? Like did this type of thing, cause they could the money would have been at the crib, you know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? Salute to Trap Lore, you know what I'm saying? But you know, Trap Lore always got a little something slick to say, something funny to say. So that's that's who he is, but you know. I still rock with Trap Lore, man. I think he do a good job. Hey, when we ain't dead and we ain't in jail and we ain't broke and we ain't, you know, life you go, you gonna be down again, like like I'm up right now. It's gonna be times I'm gonna go through some, other, I'm gonna go through some, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna think back to this time. I could always reflect on this time, like three hours, four million views, like his watch time is through the roof, everything. Everything was going good in my life. Everything was going. That time, everything going good right now. Like right now, everything going good. I ain't got no complaints. I ain't even mad about nothing. I know I done lost this. I don't understand a lot of, shit, but I ain't even mad about. It. Sadly, the good times would end suddenly, and Von would end up losing his life at the very height of his career. His album Welcome to Oblock had debuted at the unlucky number 13 on the Billboard charts. Ironically, just one position above NBA YoungBoy's album mm. Top, 
that had already spent eight weeks on the chart after going number one. Then, just after midnight on the 5th of October 2020, Von would tweet his location for the evening. He was playing a show at Atlanta Club Opium. Von would go live on Instagram on the way to the club, seemingly in good spirits and rapping along to his own music. He would do a live pre-show with the name of the club pinned, and he would be seen on Instagram posted up smoking hookah with his entourage of O-Block natives. He would go on to play that concert at Opium, where he would be seen jamming out on stage at the club, surrounded by his team and shouting out somebody in the crowd for wearing Not From 63rd merch, as well as dissing girls who were acting stuck up at the front of the show. Man, I see everybody in this like y'all don't see a But I see a motherfucker in this bitch game. I see you got that 63rd shirt back there, my This is blood, I gotta get back game. I don't know this This is got to get back game. I love that, I love you guys. Hey, you know, it's all I love for this T-up shit. I, I done dropped that on, that welcome to Roblox. That boy crazy. Oh, I don't want to take nobody, you know, the one off. Stress game off. There's a lot of bad hoes in here. I've been walking through them. Damn, this decent shit in here. You know, we trying to party and have fun in this bitch. I ain't gonna lie. We got the little bougie. They acting bougie right here. They right here. Y'all yeah, better stop that, man. So we finna tee up. Oh, yeah. Turn up. Oh, I got DJ Benz in this Just after 1am, King Von would retweet a Young and Ace lyric with a caption saying that his crew are going to catch somebody and he sees them as food. Because while King Von is performing at Opium, Quando Rondo and his entourage are fresh off recording a new music video for the song The Drop, being seen on social media showing off an array of high-powered weapons that they're holding onto. After finishing his show, King Von would be seen leaving Opium in an SUV. And interestingly, just got up out of here. that truck can be heard playing the NBA Youngboy song My Window as it was driving away. I see a lot of cars behind here. King Von! King Von! Playing. Apparently Von would confuse his team by choosing not to go back to his Airbnb as his security crew initially thought. Instead, Von would take a last minute and unexplained detour to the Monaco hookah lounge where Quando Rondo was. With King Von's manager, 100k track, later telling DJ Vlad that his team was blindsided by the change in plan. He went over there to the after party and then his driver and his homeboy let us know that we was redirected. We're thinking we're gonna go to the Airbnb or the hotel. At around 3.20 on November the 6th, King Von would find himself outside the Monaco hookah lounge in Atlanta. Perhaps he knew Quando Rondo would be there, or perhaps it was just a coincidence. All we know is that while there, Von approached Quando Rondo and began assaulting him with a flurry of punches, with Quando's close friend Lil Tim opening fire and striking King Von four times. Security footage of the fight and subsequent shooting would circulate online after the incident. What happened that night is that Von walked up to Quando Rondo and sucker punched him outside the club and proceeding to beat him up in front of a huge crowd. But after throwing a few punches, Quando's friend Lil Tim would jump out of a car and shoot King Von four times. Von's friends from Oblock, Slutty and Louie would attempt to shoot Lil Tim, leaving him wounded but not dead. After shooting Lil Tim to the ground, they would attempt to execute him on the floor, but the gun would jack. Whilst this is going on, a wounded King Von continues to wrestle with Quando Rondo on the floor. At this point, Von's other friend Muwop would approach, punching Quando Rondo to the ground and separating him from Von. Meanwhile, after failing to execute Lil Tim, Slutty and Louie would attempt to flee the scene without realizing that they were running directly towards undercover police officers who would open fire, believing that their lives were in danger too. The police would kill Slutty and leave Louis in critical condition. Muwop and other Oblock members would drag King Von's limp body to a waiting car and rush him to the hospital. But what's even more crazy is that Quando Rondo would take Lil Tim to the very same hospital that King Von and his team were at, with Quando Rondo even going live, showing himself trying to get Tim into the hospital and get assistance. Yeah, I remember all of this footage, man. It's crazy time. THF Bezu would later post saying that he'd seen Quando at the hospital, suggesting that they would have shot him if he didn't start recording. But ultimately, King Von would be rushed into emergency surgery in critical condition after the shooting. He would ultimately die in hospital, with media all around the world waking up to the news and reporting on his death. Yeah, Rick and Sean, according to GBI, rapper King Vaughn and his group were at Opium Nightclub before making their way here to Monaco Hookah Lounge, then to the parking lot where chaos ensued. Believe it or not, this all playing out right in front of two. 
You'll never catch me at a hookah lounge. I don't even do no hookah, so I'm good. Atlanta police officers. One of them was actually inside his patrol car or next to his patrol car with his blue lights on. APD responding, attempting to stop the shooting, but it was too late. It hit like the one officer that did respond. He tried to protect himself and stop what was going on. The investigation on this shootout will continue. No officers were injured during this incident. According to GBI, this is the 82nd officer involved shooting that they've been requested to investigate in 2020 powerful immune support i started watching this like watching a movie man i've been sitting here two and a half hours for y'all man i did this twice today earlier today and now i'm doing it again at night it's 11 p.m it's on a saturday night i should be outside but nah this is time well spent man a good documentary man some of the friends of people it's like when you're from chicago you can't really you know what i'm saying you can't really <coughs> like i gotta go to chicago i gotta be in chicago it's like what my mm. I'm just here watching. Michael Vaughn was rumored to have killed would post on social media. Billionaire Black would post a picture of Modell McCambry, and the person who was shot with Modell the night he was killed posted a picture of FBG Duck, saying that Duck would be happy greeting Vaughn in the afterlife. P5, aka Crack's cousin, would post on Facebook saying that he had been praying for the day that King Vaughn would be killed, whilst other friends of Crack would post tributes now that their friend's killer was no longer alive. Apparently, Crack's little brother would even post saying that they caught two of the three people who were present when Crack was killed and suggesting that they were disappointed not to be the ones who killed Von. Outside of Chicago, affiliates of NBA Youngboy like Big B would mock King Von in an Instagram story, saying that it was funny that he was the one who started the beef and dissing NBA Youngboy, and now he was the one dead. The joke's on you, you diss, now you're getting wrapped down. Yeah. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, people on Von's side would express their heartbreak at losing their main man. Asian Doll claimed to want to die when the news came out, and Lil Durk would mourn the loss of his twin. Even rap's number one superstar Drake would post a tribute to Von after he passed. NBA Youngboy's biggest enemy, Fredo Bang, would also mourn the loss of Von too. 12 days after his final tweet, somebody would take control of King Von's Twitter account, releasing a statement thanking everybody who supported Von whilst he was alive. There would be a media frenzy around King Von's death. Funeral homes were also refusing to take King Von's body due to fears of violence at the ceremony. And when the family finally found a place that was willing to host the funeral for Chicago's most famous killer, they were forced to have it at one day's notice. Eventually, Von would get the peaceful burial his family had hoped for, with Von being laid to rest in Chicago on November the 14th, 2020, with pictures of Von's funeral program and casket being posted on social media. But being such a divisive figure in Chicago gang politics, Von's enemies continue to disrespect his gravesite to this very day. Naturally, Von's death sparked a strong response from many of his supporters. 600 Breezy claimed to be headed to NBA Youngboy. He should have got like a gazebo type thing. His hood at 150 miles an hour with the steppers. BJ, who was also shot the night that King Von was killed, would also post saying that their ops are cursed now that O Block is after them. Meanwhile, NBA Youngboy affiliate Michi replied and said that people only really slide in silence. Right the whole day, going on hell, scary, doing all that capping, get on that. I don't let shit, man. Real don't speak. Hey, if you go do something, man, do something. You don't come to no city and annihilate you in a city, man. You were supposed to slab out that, man. Von was eventually memorialized in his native O Block with a painting that became a tourist spot. This mural became a pilgrimage for both diehard fans who wanted to show their love and death defying ops who wanted to show that they're not scared to come to O Block. With longtime rival FBG Cash posting up at the mural with a disrespectful right, caption okay. towards Von with Cash himself ending up being killed only months later. Once a few months passed from Von's death, his self-proclaimed twin Lil Durk would dedicate his next album, The Voice, to King Von, releasing it on December the 24th, 2020, with a front cover that depicted Durk and Von together. And eventually, Quando Rondo would break his silence about his involvement. If I'm being serious, man, RIP to everybody who lost their life over city street beefs in Chicago, man. And, I, and I, I'm gonna be real, it's never gonna change. It's no hope for it. But, you know what I'm saying, I just hope that, pe that people protect themselves, man. Get up out of there, move your kids away, at least do something different, man. ...in the incident that claimed King Von's life. On the 20th you know, a lot of... of people, like, I ain't gonna get nobody no advice because I know a lot of people, that's just a way of life, bars. Um, but, uh, 
you know what I'm saying? Hopefully something that happened to somebody that could bring you up out of there without it being too tragic and without it being a, at a cost of loss of life. Damn, can y'all hear me? The mic far as hell, my bad. November 2020, Quando Rondo releases the song End of Story, a song that's title is a disrespectful play on Vaughn's most popular song, Crazy Story. And in the song, Quando touches on the incident that ended up taking King Vaughn's life, expressing frustration about being judged and saying that other people's friends wouldn't have defended him like Lil Tim did, as well as essentially dissing King Vaughn and his friends, saying, blood on your brother on the ground, go pick your mans up, as well as rapping that him and Tim are claiming self-defense and that Vaughn should have never put his hands on Quando. He would also claim that this situation led to a million dollar bounty being put on his head. And following the release of this song, he would also elaborate further on the events that unfolded that night in an extended interview. Bro said he hit me. You he hit ma'am. I didn't know where I was. View <coughs> with Angela Yee this speaking on the classy. situation, saying that the night that Vaughn was killed, he thought he was just letting a group of random people walk past before being suddenly sucker punched by Vaughn. Like, I'm thinking it's a regular individual. Next thing you know, a nigga hit me. Quando would say that the entire incident felt like an out of body experience to him. It's like I had an out of body experience. Quando would also claim that the moment that King Von came over and started to fight with him, he felt like the devil was coming to get him. Like it's like the devil was coming to get me, like. Quando explained to Angela Yee that Lil Tim was his day one homie and he would protect him from anything. He want, I want to think about it, he gonna. And uh, you can't dispute that in the streets, like that's what, you're supposed to protect the money at all times and that's what Lil Tim did, he protected the money, period. Protect me with anything which anybody should do. Apparently, while the gunshots were going off, Quando says that he prayed, unaware of what was going on and only coming to his senses after both Von and Tim had been shot. On some out loud screaming jive, like out of body experience, it's like everything went back normal and I've been back down. Quando was adamant that he didn't even know that it was King Von that he'd been fighting until the next day. I didn't know this was him. Ma'am, I swear to God, on my soul, ma'am, like, like ma'am. Quando would also say that he didn't know about the beef between Young Boy's camp and King Von's camp when this all went down. Cause I know dude just dropped the tape. Like was they trying to do something to me? Just boost him up or like, what? I don't know. You just don't like, know where, you just don't know where it came from. You have no idea. However, unfortunately for Quando Rondo, there would be more tragedies headed his way personally following the death of Von. In the aftermath, Quando Rondo and his team would be a frequent target of what appeared to be revenge attack. Mm -hmm. You heard them song. He would be targeted in a shooting at a convenience store in Georgia on the 2nd of May 2021, luckily escaping without injury. But in the next incident, Quando would be less lucky. On August the 20th, 2022, Quando Rondo and his entourage would be targeted in a shooting in Los Angeles, an incident which left his close friend Lil Pab dead and a devastated Quando Rondo being recorded at the scene in the immediate I aftermath. I thought it was about to Men's Warehouse, 50 years. Oh, how long is this? If they drop a part two, that's gonna be crazy. You couldn't fit it all in three hours and a half? King Von's life oh. was one of extremes. He grew he up in extreme should. poverty with a major disadvantage. He found himself being drugged into the extremely violent streets of Chicago, and he ended up being allegedly one of the most violent killers in Oblock's history. By the time he died, he had been connected to at least 11 murders that I've read about. But ultimately, we'll probably never know the full extent of Von's activities in the streets. There's no doubt that Von was a prolific gangbanger and shooter, but having spent so much time analyzing him and the things that he did in his life, it's hard to ignore the pleasure and pride that he seemed to get, not just from killing, but being known as a killer. An everyday gang member or even mob hitman tends to kill for survival or money. But for Von, reading all of his tweets and lyrics, it's clear that he derived a great deal of psychological pleasure from the killings that he was associated with. It seemed like he was more satisfied by carrying out a hit in the streets than making a hit record. And perhaps that's why, when he got rich and famous as a rapper, he couldn't leave that in the past. Because he wasn't killing to survive, he was killing for fun. And gaining satisfaction from the whole world knowing what he had done. There was no reason for Von to take so much pleasure in the murder of Can't Get Right. And there really was no reason for Von to put a $100,000 bounty on FBG Duck's head. Von would have been a millionaire by this point, And FBG Duck was also a successful rapper in his own right. Duck wasn't a threat to the survival of Von or any of his friends at this point. No, to Von, Duck was just another. I don't know how I look at him, maybe. 
But yeah, you know, Vine was out the city at this time. It didn't even matter at this point, but you know. Another trophy, another body on his tally, another score on the board. Sadly, many people look up to King Von for what he did in the streets, but I don't think that's much different from how other serial killers seem to get idolized. Someone like Jeffrey Dahmer was known for targeting Damn. black gay men in his community. They didn't compare King Von to Jeff Dahmer. Community, partly due to the fact that he knew he could get away with it. And when it comes to King Von's alleged victims, it seems like he had a type too. Young, black, men, women from the same poor and overpopulated area he was from. Because perhaps like Jeffrey Dahmer, Von knew that the cops simply didn't care enough to solve these crimes, so he knew he would get away with it. And he did get away with it for his entire life. Von would beat every murder investigation that his name was ever placed in. But if he was alive today, he very well may have been facing a life in prison for his role in the killing of FBG Duck. Von gave the world a lot of great music that told one of the most unique and raw stories to have ever come out of the Chicago drill scene. Von will definitely be remembered as one of the biggest and best rappers to ever emerge out of the city. He made great music, but also did terrible things. And so realistically, he'll probably also be remembered as rap's very first serial killer. Tell y'all leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. That's part two, man, for me at least. Try, try, bet not come out. You not now. You got to do an FBG duck one. I don't even know if you did one before. You got to do a cash FBG. You got to do them all now. I'm gone.